Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chaotic Neutral Games. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because of uh, Kate's counting. Uh, we're a class outfit. We really are. I, I love her. They're our uh, little crew. <laughs> uh, so, lots to talk about uh, today, but uh, some thoughts first, I guess. Um, I, I've kind of pre-written this, uh, this intro I, and uh, kind of gone through it in my head because uh, it kind of rambles a bit, but I wanna, wanted to get to the point as quick as possible. Um, I don't know how many people this is going to relate to, but I had some hassle uh, for being imaginative when I was growing up. Um, the stories and ideas that I had maybe seem uh, outlandish, attention-seeking, or just plain weird. Um, the last one's probably true. Um, I love my ideas, however, and my imagination would lead me into inventing make-believe games for my friends and tell stories to my little brother. In fact, I think my first look into writing and role-playing was probably around the time that my brother and my friends started growing out of that stuff and uh, started looking into cars and, and other things and so on. That's not to say I didn't have other interests as well. I remember a lot of judgment for being openly imaginative hurt me quite a lot. I mean, they were, after all, attacking what, to me, was a defining characteristic of myself. These days, I have a different reaction to that kind of judgment, especially online, because you got to have a thick skin there, right? I feel sorry for them. And not in a condescending way. Storytelling and fantasy has to be one of the oldest forms of entertainment. I mean, it's right up there with finger painting, splashing water, breaking shit and sex, right? It's old. Caveman stuff. It's free, it connects people, and allows people to see a part of yourself when you open your mind and have access to something that's either unseen in day-to-day -day life or actively hidden for fear of shame. It allows us to explore concepts, dip our toes into life choices, explore our values, and face or at least share our fears. Telling stories to our loved ones around the fireplace is a tradition that's seen throughout human history irrespective of culture and has only been seen differently in the last 80 years or so where a family can sit catatonically in front of an electronic storyteller and communicate with little more than a perfunctory comment. I was hurt by the judgement in the past because I was branded weird, an outsider. How little I knew that their comments were because they themselves may have lost something a little human something special and so instinctive the children do it without prompting the instinct to generate color and to make people smile it's harder as you grow up um, and you can let life put you into a mold uh, to create unashamedly and uninfluenced is is difficult and i get it i do the hardest person for me to tell stories to is the person i want to give them to the most my daughter but if we're brave, then step up and don't fear embarrassment. The rewards are so amazing. On the 30th of November, which should be the day after this episode airs, we're going to be at Dragon Meet, a role-playing specific convention in London to join our friends in Podcast Zone UK in encouraging others to step up and tell their stories. We aim to do, so, uh, do also an example pilot podcast on the day to show people how easy it is to take that first step. We don't know how it's going to turn out. Uh, Kate, uh, Corinne and Nick will be joining me, as will one of our viewers and uh, friend through Kate, Seekian, aka Sean. And we'll just take that first step. We don't know if we'll end up turning it into a regular thing or whatever, or a semi-regular thing, but who cares? It's taking that first step. And if any of you are thinking of doing the same, do a little bit of preparation, sure, get yourself confident. But when all of a sudden it's only your fear holding you back, make sure you do take that first step. An old friend of mine said the only qualification for being a performer is to take that first step onto the stage. Anyway, that's my thoughts over and the plug for Dragon Meet. If you are going to Dragon Meet, come to Podcast Zone UK and say hi to us. But if not, well you'll be able to hear our podcast because we'll link it out on our social media. Anyway, without any further ado, welcome to episode 53 of The Benefactor.
Welcome back, everybody, and hello to the players. Hello. 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 Right. After my little longer intro, I'm going to make sure they don't get progressively longer, I promise. But uh, I did want to uh, put out a few thoughts and, uh, and give that plug to Dragon Meat. So you currently are taking the shortest of short rests. I'll explain that in a second. In the... Oh, I just kicked my mic. Sorry, Kate. Um, the shortest of short rests in a warehouse that's around about a block away from the green mansion which is ideally the best place to go you know that uh, renata green has got a large amount of defenses there and if you're going to be uh, trying to help against the uh, dangers to the city as much as you uh, have some suspicions if not direct allegations about your employer her place is probably a good place to start in this siege now, I said the shortest of short rests. The only one of you who really needs to use a lot of hit points is, uh, sorry, hit dice, is Eclipse of the Moon. So I'm going to say that instead of the usual hour, you guys are going to uh, heal up what little problems you've got yourself and then spend a lot of time through teamwork getting Eclipse up and running again. And so I'm going to say this probably only takes about 15 minutes. During Resting 15... with teamwork. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, during the... Uh, well, it's more, it's more team first aid as they're patching you up from all of the crap that happened to you. Although saying that, there's not a huge amount of damage on you because most of the damage you took was actually through your link. Uh, but yeah, they so it's, it's just like group therapy for like 15 minutes. And then... <laughs> <laughs> they're not I there. actually have a very long and boring lecture about the dangers of hiding from your teammates <laughs> when when you're being damaged yeah <laughs> okay yeah. so after a, oh. after a 15 minute ted talk from farewell uh, <laughs> this is my I love the talk. smile from nick that was like damn straight i'm giving you that yeah. chat. <laughs> this is this is my ted talk <laughs> Everybody um, gets so after you, uh, after you have that that chat, you um, uh, you're feeling a bit better, Eclipse. You know, Wait, and and do we get any uh, health back, or since yes. we're talking about the short rest? Because I've roll shown how points. much I heal. Yeah, roll your hit points. That uh, your hit dice. Just don't one of the hit add... dice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to add your con mod. Plus con mod. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Can do, can do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. I'm just... No, it's, it's been fine. so long. I clearly Zero. haven't been trying to kill you enough. I apologize and I will Thank you. resolve to do better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you just made me use all my hit dice, so, you know. Okay, so I'm doing well and you're encouraging me. That's good. All right, cool. Uh, so... I'm sorry. Uh, during the 15 minutes, you can hear that there is a... It, it, it's eerie outside. I mean, you guys have been... Some, well, some of you guys have been around when there have been riots and uh, so on in the city. They don't tend to last long. Um, but they don't sound like this. First of all, the city sounds too quiet in one sense. The susurrus of busy people, carts people chatting as they go down the street, people shouting at each other from stalls and rooftops. None of that. A lot of sounds are missing. It makes it all the worse that in between this silence, there's the occasional cry for help or a scream or a screech or a roar. The city sounds completely different to how it should. You hear a, a male bellow somewhere nearby that's just cut off very quickly. The city seems to be collectively hiding or that many people are dead. 
Was it? Did we end with time? Simon, remind me. Did we end with that we're starting to hear music? No. 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 no that was the discussion no. No, okay. afterwards about something else. Yeah. No, no. Okay. No. That that's yeah that that's completely different. Yeah, that, that's that's me preparing something with Kate. Um, mm -hmm. So, what you know, which you found out from last session, is that you are not far away at all from the Green Mansion. You know that place is warded. The entire building, you suspect, is a magical item, which means it's got a lot of resilience. And it also... <laughs> Spooky. Apologies. <laughs> Sorry, I clicked a button that just sent it the sound really high. So <laughs> ominous. It came ominous at just the right creepy. point as well. I know. <laughs> and uh, you also know that she has a, a lot of arcane defenses. It's very, uh, It's very heavily warded to scrying and also she has from what you saw before a good supply of both healing and mana potions mana potions being incredibly rare around here i'm going to call them mana potions they aren't called that um in uh, this world but uh they are potions that can restore spell slots and they take well even the smallest one takes months to make anything above that takes years to make it is not something that any player character can arguably do. And she has enough there to be able to withstand a fairly good siege, you're guessing. And beyond that, the only other place that you can think of going to is the palace. And considering they didn't let you in in peacetime, in wartime, you think you may have even slightly, le uh, uh, slightly less of a chance. Uh. I vote we go to the temple. Which your the, your temple? Yeah, or or Pelos. Um, Pelos oh, is a bad we... idea. Oh, they don't like me there. Be, you'll be fine. You'll be with us. Why Pelos? Last Pelos, time, though? one of the paladins almost started a fight. So, he well, was I so. I remember that as you starting that. I, I, I'm pretty hey, sure hey, you did I that. I just winked at him while he was scrawling at me. It's not my fault he can't take a joke. Why, why don't we just go to, to the mansion? It's right there. And we, our plan um, is to... What in part of she probably knows what we've done that we spent the last... Well, we already have a plan to what? say that we didn't. Because she wasn't able to scry it. Corinne, you're coming out. It's very loud. I, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> it's all right. I'm it's turn down Discord, I guess, or, or from, from your... From... Various I'm, ends. Not, I'm not, not Korean, yeah. necessarily. Yeah, um, I can turn it down from here. Yeah. Um, I, I, why would we go to Pelos? I'm, I'm up for going to yours because that's in Freetown, and I'm interested <laughs> in seeing what shit there. is going down the reason, there. The reason why we were brought here is so we could go to, to the mansion. It's why we're here. Oh, we were, we came here to try and stop what's going on and if anybody yes. doesn't know how to break the veil uh, very powerful priests will be a very useful tool yes, we heard. to be honest it... I'm not very good at lying oh, I yeah, am. So looking, leave that to me. yeah but looking like I'm lying and just, I just don't keep... like the plan farewell, well, farewell. We... look at me all you need yes. to do is trust me and trust in my ability you don't need to think about the fact that you're technically lying just think that you trust me and it'll be fine i think i might be a better liar than you wait what double check i think i have double oh, proficiency I in suction we're, yes. we're in the yes, middle of wow. my we proficiency i have double proficiency so i have plus 11 of deception yeah. Uh, you do realize that I have a TR yes, that makes it so people. that they can't tell if I'm lying. Um, I think we're missing the point here. The city is being attacked. I don't think we need to go and report into Miss Green at this very moment. We need to deal with the situation right now and who is in trouble. Fortified! Fortified! Yeah. Plagues of operations! Yeah. Yeah, Help! Fortified has... potentially against us, though. We have the keys. 
she holds up her green. Uh, 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 I nearly said something else there. Green <laughs> organization badge. Yeah. Sure, but I used also, to work for a you want to go there to hide yeah. from this or to fight it though? No, no, no. We need to go there. Find out what actually is going on, where the places are the best to go, and also there's a lot of resources we can get from there. Remember the vault. There's lots of potions and lots of which is probably and more important where everyone's going. Cora, Consi consider the fact that she is owned the institute. I'm sure that whatever it is that broke the veil is somewhat how connected to the greens. So, if we I'm... go there, she might yeah, actually send us straight to it. I'm so glad that I prepared multiple places for you to go when I said this. Um, so, uh, all of a sudden, Eowyn mm -hmm. uh, flits down from the rafters and onto Cora's shoulder, and she goes, Raven Queen Temple's going to be a problem, Cora. All the gates are shut. The city's locked. So we can't get out into Freetown? That's the thing, is that from what I can tell from here, the smoke and, and other things, this city's being sieged from the inside out. That sounds about right. That's what I was expecting. Well, maybe that means they're safer. Um, I relay this to everyone. I don't know if Erwin said, just said that to my head. If she did, I will relay uh, stuff. Um... Uh, I will actually um, ask Eowyn to f kind of uh, he head out and kind of um, get, get a get a bird's eye view and try and give us an idea of um, of the lay of the land a bit and what's going on and where the the hot spots look like they are and stuff. Just sort of flit up there f while we're kind of resting. I I'll probably do that actually because uh, I'm I'm kind of anxious okay. to get uh, out and see. So yeah, she yeah, oh, she would have yeah, been can, doing I... a bit of that. I, I, I've got pretty good eyesight. I, I could go up quite a bit and, and see what I see. And then maybe go around a bit. Uh, you carry on healing yeah, the cat. Stay I'll, out of I'll the be right back. danger. Okay. As, as she starts to fly off, I, um, I, I, ho I hold her once, uh, air in one second, and I gently touch her hand, and I will uh, cast Guidance on her. Cool, yes. She oh, gives man. she gives you a wink, and with a kind of Tinkerbellish crossing of her legs, she flies up... Um, uh, and out of what seems to be just a, a broken panel um, up in the eaves. And uh, you you carry on. I'll say that, that you did this kind of as part of your short rest. 15 minutes finishes, Eowyn comes back down and she goes, okay, um, there's these nasty bird things. I, I Well, they're kind of in insects. And they're insects with like human bodies. I, I, oh, I, there's lots of things about. Uh, so there's these big things with like tusks and that they kind of like um i guess they're like an up upside down triangle no, well, no what not triangle pyramid like an upside down pyramid um rough, roughly roughly that shape they've got like a the, the, the top of them's almost flat and they've got these strange big tusks that that aren't sharp they're just like most of them seem to be like broken and kind of scratched and they're walking around pretty much everywhere um and they seem to be like the main forces on the ground. I say there's these insect kind of people who are on the rooftops and and they're trying to get into the buildings. And then uh, then the, there's other mixed ones that I saw from afar. But you know they were kind of a little bit here and a little bit there. The main two are those two. Um, okay, so uh, Pelor. I, I looked at the Pelor Temple. Uh, they barricaded it. It's looking pretty rough. Most of the windows are broken. Um, I saw like these um, these, these creatures, uh, like the, the bug men, they were there, they were trying to get in from the top. And then there was these other creatures, uh, these kind of large kind of creatures, like, um, do you know what a gorilla is? Uh, I don't it's, know it's if Cora like, does, like but let's say she does. <laughs> she probably doesn't, knowing her background. Sure. She goes, it's like a, it's like a probably... really big monkey. It's like it's like a monkey that's gone like training at the Cord Temple. It's really big, and the, 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 these were like those. Only they had big tusks and red eyes, and 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 they they had this horrible smell as well. And they're trying they're trying to climb into the 
the Pelor temple and there's a lot of people in there but the paladins and the and the priests and and that uh, and there's an angel there as well it's really cool i've never seen an angel like that before and and, and it, it's going around it's hitting them and all the rest of it but they it, it's not killing them as fast as i i'd like an angel to kill things it has a big sword and it's still not killing them that well anyway um there's there's a lot of fire and smoke coming from the liberty quarter and a lot of the buildings have fallen down um and so it's it's this big it, it's just like a big pile of rubble i mean the liberty quarter didn't look all that good before but now it looks like this giant trash heap um and uh there i did see soldiers so soldiers are going around in groups um but they're running a lot as well Okay, uh, she said that basically to everyone, by the way, because if she started to do it just to me, I would have told her to um, told her tell to, everybody. To say yeah, all this stuff. Um, okay, well, that gives us a bit more information. Should we I don't try think we can get out the city, Cora. I don't know. I don't think that's freaking likely right now. I think we need to, to deal be with honest, it. To be honest, if the, the powers... Yeah, if and... the powers stop, it, like... They're after something in the city, probably. Even if they're mindlessly killing things. So, I don't think Freetown will be the biggest target right now. No. It's probably we... around here. It's probably the mansion itself. I don't know. It'll be something... Mm. Yeah, clearly we know the city has been the ones breaking this <clears throat> veil and pissing off the architect is that their name um and uh i don't think it's oh, pissing no. the architect off he will want whatever it is they're doing yeah he he wants to learn and and you know yeah break break it more probably so he wants to know how they did it i expect it's something like that i don't know um okay so it sounds like pelor's temple is under siege why do you think it's a good place to go, Farewell? Because there's a shit ton of paladins there. Oh. And they're demons. Okay, and, yeah. And nothing says like killing demons like divine smiting. Well, yeah. what's gonna be... But they, they, they probably, probably don't probably need our not... help then. They probably yeah. don't. Sounds, we might need it theirs. Sounds like they, they need our help. If if it's all smashed in and they're Even calling then, in and if they, we help them, if they have they summoned have the an extra planar ally, they're in trouble. And there's people there, innocent people. Yes. Yes, but what I'm but saying is, even if we help them and fuck we the kill whatever it is, I don't give a shit about getting more spells. I care more about people. No, source. We need to stop this at the source. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, accent. Uh, I apologize. Yes, we need to stop this at the source. I don't think the Pelor Temple is the source of where, where what the demons want to get to, or where we need to go. And even if we help them, we will only stall it out as more demons come from the source. They can hold their own. You said it yourself. There's nothing like Pellor thingies killing demons for some reason. Awen, you said you saw something coming out of the sewers. Was it more of these? Does it look like maybe that's where they're starting out? It looked like that pink stuff. What, it's just oozing out no, of the right. sewers? Fuck. Uh, yeah, but it, it it wasn't like it wasn't like it was spilling out like the sewers were overflowing. It kind of slopped its way out of the sewers, touched a dead body, and transformed into something that looked like the de the dead body. Oh, I don't think that your usual tunnels going through the city walls will be safe. I think you'd be going up against those. Right. Oh, great. So basically, they're also turning dead into freaking things to attack. I think we need to make a move. No, no, the How... de the dead body. The dead body stayed the same. It just copied the image, although it's really stupid because oh. it it also it also copied the wound. So the guy just walked off with this great big gaping wound in his chest. It's not going to be a very good disguise. I think the user's kind of dumb. Oh, okay. Well, that's useful to know that we hopefully aren't going to come across. I don't. Yeah. Well, I guess we don't know who we can trust if they can imitate like that. 
Um, how are you feeling, Eclipse? Are you feeling better? I think so. By the I way, have... I am sorry. I underestimated um... my own power with that last hit, that, uh, and then you, you disappeared, and so, so sorry. It's it's alright. It wasn't really you were you were trying to kill the other guy. <laughs> uh, succeeded, so <laughs> yay! And I didn't die. You it's didn't been die. A good day. Yep. So now, far, so you, good. You have no idea how close you came. <sighs> okay. Well, let's not so have good. a close call again. Let's maybe sneak our way out as much as possible. And, uh... Uh, we can maybe take to the air with the... Oh, carpet. we have the magic carpet! Yes. Did, didn't anyone say that there was giant bug birds? She said that... Oh, yeah, wait. Are they flying, or they just look like birds? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they uh... They're flying. They, they... Well, no, they're not birds. They, they look like kind of... Flies, I guess? Oh. Like oh. midges. Ew. Yeah. But yeah, they they're, fly? They're, they're kind of gross. Hmm? They do fly, though? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, they, they fly. They're, they're trying to get in through the roofs. So uh, there are people who are going up high to try and um, to try and get away from the th the big things that's on the floor. And when they do that, the, these other ones come and they and they get them. I, I still think uh, that the Eclipse is right. Maybe the carpet's still a good idea, that we start on the carpet but, but fly lowish through the streets so we can stay together without like I'm slow when I run I don't want to slow everyone down if we stay on the carpet for as long as we can and we that will be sneakier too because we won't have to clump 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 you think what do you think uh, yes <laughs> is the pillow the carpet is faster than all of us so exactly um uh, Simon where's the pillow temple in comparison to the gr the um the mansion and, and in this is ordinarily where I would. This is ordinarily uh, where I bring up a map of the city, but I don't have one. <laughs> I oh, don't oh, that one oh. We don't have. Oh I yes, yeah, I did. I haven't loaded that into the new um, <laughs> Roll Twenty thing because I thought you were just walking out into the street. Yeah, <laughs> fool. <Okay>. Yeah, fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, as I said, we um, don't need to worry about the Paler Temple anyway because it's not. Relevant. <laughs> yeah, hang on a sec. It's it's a uh, easy yes, thing to but, but it that will only it. delay it. It won't do anything. <laughs> yeah, but if characters right. want to we are people, only a group of four, we are a group of four people, and our job is to stop it at the source. Let the guards take care of the other people. <laughs> right. Let's bring up the map here. I can check that in quickly. Uh, let's see, Alaria. And you question the glorious family's ways. Okay, this is an unmarked map, uh, but yes. I can, I can, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've just thrown this onto roll twenty, so I apologize in advance. Um, <laughs> so if I put you onto this one here. Yee. And if I grab oh, lovely. Up. So yeah, the, this is <laughs> none of the markings. This is just the basic one. And uh, I'll just bring up a, a marker. Uh, right, okay. Is okay, it? Because I'm using the, tri worth the triangle. Uh, okay, so you are currently. Um, let's see. You are currently about here. He says, "Make it a bit smaller." <laughs> you're you're about there at the moment. And if I copy that. The Pelor Temple is this big bugger over here. Ah. Oh. Which one is the one in the middle, then? Uh, the one in the middle... I think that's the Kordish Temple. Okay. No, that's... No, that... Uh, hang on, that's... Uh, that's the Arathian Temple, I think. Oh, the orange... Okay. The, the, the pink ones are temples, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought the pillar one was the one in the middle. Ah, I, hey. I remember Tokyo. Hang on, let, let me check. Let me check it up. Do you guys uh, think we no. should risk using these and trying to contact other green members and find out more information? Well, that would look make us look a lot, lot more credible if we arrive and then instantly contact or technically are still our superior officer and see what's going on. Because otherwise it makes it look very, very suspicious. I put my old notebook somewhere and I don't know where I put it. It <laughs> has names in it. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, uh, Hestiga. Name. Is it Hestiga? The, the big dragonborn? We should, uh, we can... Uh, yep. What if um, we I contact her? Contact... I trust her. Well, we need to contact Renata regardless. Because otherwise we will be in... We will not be believable at all. So I will contact her. Okay. Didn't they? Okay, fine. But I thought, I thought we'd already been given a, the scout. I, I thought, I thought that's what the well, dragon well, did. Yes, but no. we need to make sure that when we arrive, that we contact her as, as we still trust her. Yeah. You go for it. Do your thing. Yes. I will try to call Renata. Oh my mobile. Green okay. <laughs> Hang on. New phone. Who dis? <laughs> oh yeah, that that I'm one is certain. Uh, checking something okay. on here. So, oh, it's fine. I found a map in the PDF thingy you sent uh, yep, in the I, beginning. So that is just what I'm opening up now. So uh, for anybody who is watching this on the stream, you can click the uh, uh, the link below um on the show notes and number 13 is the temple of cord which is in the middle of the city and number 12 is temple of pelor which is the one i pointed out so yeah i got my own content right it's the first time nice. for <laughs> so yes uh right so if i put the uh big triangle there so the big triangle is the temple of pelor which is this giant cathedral um, that's how I kind of knew it is that it's the biggest uh, pink blob and you guys are on the little triangle and you're just um, a, a, say a block away from uh, Renata Green so mm. whilst you guys were arguing debating whatever um, I missed a cue okay so at the end of your short rest and before um, Eclipse gets a chance to contact Renata Green, you hear something through your badges as part of what I can only describe as radio chatter. Yeah? And oh. uh, you, do, uh, you do hear a, a kind of male elven voice say, Breaking silence. We're coming back. <sighs> yep. Looks like they've adapted again. Any more ideas, send them through to us on a private... Ow! Uh, one of them got me. I should be all right. And oh, no. up again. Well, I don't really know what that means, so I will try to contact Renata, but it might not work because it's breaking radio silence or something like that. Okay. So you <laughs> you can you contact Renata Green, or mm -hmm. at least you you call out to her. Yeah. yeah and I instead, try. instead you get uh, you get another voice. Um, this time a oh. um, you've met this person before they are a warforged um, mm. that uh, uh, that works for Renata Green you've only met them in passing they've normally come in with the patrol that they've been assigned to and uh, they are a uh, an arcanist unit and uh, they uh, they say uh, eclipse of the moon uh, uh, one yes. second. Don't say any. Don't don't say anything. One second. Your badges will will kind of make a small shrill sound. It's perfectly fine. And there's a kind of tinnitus sound in your ears, and it goes. Okay. Yep. We can detect you now. Uh, okay. You're not far from us. That is perfect. I. Uh, one moment, Miss Green. Uh, Miss Green, we've got the hawk and harness. That they're here. Uh, they found their way into the city somehow. Uh, okay, uh, right, so, yes, they're, they're nearby, miss. Uh, let, uh, 
Yeah, I, I've literally just heard from them now. They're, they've been put onto a uh, onto a secure channel. Okay, uh, Eclipse of the Moon, how many of you are there? I, is everyone alive? Uh, there, there is four. Um, yeah, yes, we are alive. Um, four. There's uh, supposed uh, to be four, five uh, of you. Uh, yes. Uh, Adrian, uh, Adrian? <laughs> Iden, <laughs> Iden, uh, Iden, Iden Canelli, he's gone... He, he, it's a long story, but he's not here, but he's, he's somewhere alive. else. That's all you need to say. OK, yeah. uh, uh, please, uh? brief com uh, brief communications, please. OK, uh, right. Uh, are you able to get to us? Yes. OK, I we, think lost so. contact. we lost contact with you after you went uh, to uh, 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 Bairnsford. So, OK, let's let's get you in here. So at long the moment, story. Uh, yeah, yeah, we I, we really don't have time to hear for it now. If we get through the night, then maybe you can regale us. Uh, so what we need from you guys at the moment is on your way here, mix it up. Different tactics as you go along, they learn and they adapt. And they don't just adapt as in a single unit adapts. The shovelers will, when they start adapting, they teach the other shovelers, okay? So that's the biggest problem. They're just going through the city at the moment and they're just picking up everything they can that's organic. Um, uh, they don't seem to have any major interest in plants, although we have seen one or two being taken, but they will definitely try to get you, okay? Uh, they are yes. going to be out to try to kill you and eat you. So if you're out the way, they'll try to bring you down to their level so they can kill you and eat you. Don't right. go into the right. air. If you go into the air, the chasms will come. At least we think they're chasms. Um, the, uh, the, the whatever uh, has sent them seems to have molded them. This is a really devious uh, foe that we have here. Renata has been uh, resisting the, uh, whatever it is um, for the longest time. And she's currently here with the Duke. Make your way over here and... If you can, try to get it so they're not detected. That would be fantastic. If you have to fight them, as I say, mix it up. Be unpredictable. Um, we keep changing tactics for our squads, but there's only so many things we can tell them to do. It's not as if they're creative like our specialists. We've got another team of specialists, guys. Oh, God. And you can just hear this kind of tinny voice uh, um, speaking to people who you can't hear. Uh, right. I, I, have, a, on their I way. have a speaker. <laughs> it's like a speaker. You can all, you can all hear it if, if you tell yeah, them to yeah. listen in. The, yeah. That's going to yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hawk and Harness are on their way. Mm. And nothing else. Well, it seems like they don't suspect a thing, which is good. Yes. <laughs> Who knows? But we've got bigger fish to fry, so let's deal with one thing at a time. Uh, okay, so we got to mix it up. And I, I um, grab, I start taking my crossbow off my back, having not used it in a long time. <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, it's not much they can do. Like, like, sure, my stick is stabbing people, but stabbing people is almost always going to work. So I'm not sure why. Yeah, but using that, and I'm pointing at your lash knife, as like using that or doing a, the same sort of things, is they know how to deal with it. Like, I can't just use this blast every time they like the the thing that we fought just now it it learned it it didn't take damage from it i need well, to it try other things oh, yeah. yes well it did um, take damage but it, not I'm very sorry. much so guys if, if we're gonna go let's go yes yes let's hurry are we doing the die. magic carpet because i think that's a good idea still it's no. quiet no uh -huh. if those this sounded like whatever uh, they do when you go into the air is worse than the ground ones. I think we should oh, sneak. Oh, that's what I meant, but I meant sneaking, a foot off the ground, but... on the carpet. Not flying, like, just hovering, just really low, but... I was um... gonna say, what well, I can do for you for, for you farewell, or maybe I want to save those spell slots, because I don't have a lot don't, of them. Don't, don't use any magic, I'll be fine. I know well, the city pretty well. Yeah. Well, your new armor doesn't impose disadvantage, does it? It's uh, nope. Nope. And um, we're fine. So let's try some sneaky stuff and try to get one block. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So, you head out of the warehouse. <clears throat> Before oh, yeah. uh, exiting the door, Glory will flip her prism. So that sure. she's displaced uh, at another angle. That should help. Yep, yep. so uh, now Glory's image is now ten foot away from her body. Mm. But, uh, she takes her necklace and just kind of twiddles it, and you just watch as earring. her... Oh, sorry, earring, sorry. She, she uh, reaches up to the earring, kind of turns it in the light, and as she does so, you watch as almost like a bunch of mirrors that you're seeing in a bunch of mirrors, and the mirrors are starting to close. Her image kind of disappears momentarily and then just appears ten foot away. Um, oh, actually, I, I was going to do something else. Glory, uh, you can roll me an arcana check based on your background. <laughs> And Farewell, you can roll me a religion check based on your background. Okie dokie. Oh, that is a 25. Mm -hmm. uh, 18. Okay. Uh, so you both succeed, but uh, uh, Glory gets a little bit of extra uh, bonus. So the word chasm or chasme was mentioned. Um, so I'm going to read you out something and this is what they think is out there in the air okay so a, a chasme is a, a large demon and it has a kind of a, a body a humanoid body but then it's kind of got like a mosquito type head with a proboscis and um it's uh, got uh, wings as well and um, they are capable in large numbers of summoning more of their kind by using a ritual. Um, they have this horrible droning sound um, that when you hear it, you can fall unconscious. Yeah, it has this strange soporific effect where you'll just boom. And by fall unconscious, I don't mean zero hit points. I mean, you just go unconscious. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty nasty thing. Uh, they tend to be magically resistant. They uh, they have uh, other insect-like qualities. They can climb walls really easy. Um, the other thing as well is that their bites, their kind of needle-like nose, which uh, is as hard as steel, uh, their needle-like nose, uh, if they bite you with it, it is nasty. It does a number of things if they manage to land a hit on you like that. Um, yeah, they are not not good. They're actually better in the air than they are on the ground. So Kazme almost never um, walk along on the ground. They will normally flit from vantage point to vantage point. Okay. And hmm. apparently those are around, but whoever was talking to you, the Arcanist unit that was talking to you, uh, was there saying that they were like Kazme, but not hmm. exactly them. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, so don't go rushing to the monster manual. Uh, the... Um, so yeah, uh, that's that. So Glory uh, twiddles her earring and displaces her image. The rest of you guys, are you putting the carpet out so that you can have an option of going high if you want to? You can just have it hover a foot across the floor. I think it will move faster than us anyway. So yeah, hovering is probably a good idea. Yeah, that, I that's... I mean, it depends on... Well, can we stealth with it? Surely we can stealth I would say better. because you don't have any footfalls, I would say... As a group, I will allow you a group stealth check of directing the carpet um, mm. a along areas, and because it moves so fast as well, you hear something coming. You kind of try that. You can kind of try to duck around corners, or because you can use height to your advantage, you can kind of make it go above low buildings or hop over low buildings or into trees and things. So I would say, as a group, if you want to do like a, a group carpet check, yeah. I'll, I'll allow you kind of stealth tactics. I that, think that sounds be, like a plan. That would be kind of a cool Overall, matchup. Yeah, okay. yeah and I, the case, carpet will... doesn't make sounds the same way us walking on the ground does. So yeah. okay. that is... Cool. I will then unstrap the carpet from my back and flop it on the floor and unroll. Okay. Because Fyrel is the eternal... <laughs> yeah, he's the only one that's strength high enough to pack mule for you lot. Yep. <laughs> As the Swedish should say, you're the Bob dude. Right. Yes. Yep. The, the, the bara och betala. <laughs> mm. 
Paying Carrie. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know whether or not I should be aff offended there, so I'll just smile and nod. <laughs> Probably, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, let's get you to the next challenge, shall we? And um... seeing, as, seeing as you are going to be doing this as stealth, we'll still use the map. Okay? Oh. Um, but you are now on a carpet, which I will provide in a sec. <laughs> oh, it's dear. not the first time you've done a carpet. I see dead bodies. Zoom out, and I see you. Very you. Okay. Before I forget, uh, this map was provided by uh, our Patreon account. In um, oh, I'm trying to remember how big this bloody carpet is now. Uh, our Patreon uh, account in uh, neutral party. Five. So if you, yeah, I've I've got it as a three by three, but uh, if you need to make it bigger, then you can. Um, so uh, there we go. Oh god, yeah, it needs to be much bigger, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> and send two back. There we go. Right, you're on a carpet. Um, so, wow, that's that's actually quite huge. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's not I've, that big, but we'll keep I've it. Got, I've it got Brave New World going through my head, and we've only <laughs> been playing for 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. So, uh, yes, go uh, go check out Neutral Party. Um, you can go to Twitter and uh, go to at Neutral uh, Party Art. Or you can go to Patreon, look up Neutral Party. Uh, they will have lots of free maps there for DMs. Uh, but if you're a patron, you get even better maps. And they do uh, something really cool with them as well, actually. They do them both in day and night, gridded and gridless. So, uh, yeah, for just if you don't want to have to put all your maps together, like I try to do with the epic maps, um, like, for example, the carpet that I've just pulled up there comes from... Uh, David Hemingway on Roll20. Look him up. He's brilliant. His stuff is kind of like, a, if you like putting together Doll's House style maps, and I really do when I have the time, uh, he is brilliant. But if you just want a map that you can just throw down there, Neutral Party is my go-to. So, uh, yeah, you can take a look at pretty much everything that's here at the moment, and I'll talk through it all. Uh, so I've put Umber Hulks out for the, uh, for the shovelers, as they've been called. There's a lot of dead people um, around the place. And as you approach down one particular alleyway, stealthing your way as you go, I'll get uh, rolls off you all in a minute. I, yeah, how am I going to, how am I going to do this? Yeah. So you're going through a mixture of taller buildings and shorter buildings. And for the most part, you've managed to keep yourself nicely stealth for most of the way. I was going to... Uh, get you to do some rolls that I'm not going to get you to roll. I'll get you all to roll stealth in a sec. As you come into this place here, this is kind of like a cafe quarter around here. Um, very beautiful, um, a well-to-do part of the city. And uh, you guys have been here yourself. You, you know some of the places around here. Um, and you start to see, as you bank your carpet down a side alley, you can see these large creatures. So to describe these creatures, these creatures have a hard carapace. They have the carapace is kind of pitted, so it looks like bone. First of all, it looks like uh, sun bronzed bone. Um, slight tortoise shell kind of coloring to it, but as I say, it has that kind of uh, texture to it that is reminiscent of skeletons. Um, it has two large bug like eyes. Um, either side that seem to be quite hard as well and you can see that it doesn't have eyelids or anything like that it's just, it just seems to be these heavy set eyes and as Eowyn already pointed out their body is roughly uh, a pyramid shape like an inverted pyramid shape out of which come these two large legs these creatures don't have arms but what they do have at the front is this very large wide jaw with these two kind of uh, they're not even sharp. They're kind of these dull tusks, yeah? Uh, but be, the way you look at them, you don't think, oh, they're dull, they're not dangerous. They're dull like a hippopotamus's teeth are dull and <laughs> about as dangerous, yeah? The body of these creatures 
are quite large, so they are large creatures. Um, and they seem to be just these walking pods with these giant mouths. And you notice that the mouth, which is probably why they call them shovelers, is flat underneath in cross section. And you watch as one of the shovelers puts its face to the floor and their shape now is kind of um, uh, kind of explained. As their face presses against the floor perfectly flat, they open up this jaw and just scoop a dead body into their maw. And uh, you can hear this horrible guttural sound as this creature just uh, swallows this uh, humanoid uh, whole. It is a, a female half-orc that um, gets shoveled into this thing's mouth. And you can watch as a, a, a clear liquid suddenly just seeps out of one of the carapace plates. Uh, this thing seems to have like its own living plate armor and this this kind of liquid just comes out and you can see that this clear liquid starts to turn milky and starts to dry as it hits the air almost like it's sweating super glue hmm. nice. they currently haven't seen you they seem to be the way they seem to be walking around they don't seem to be the most intelligent of creatures they seem to be like, well, if it wasn't for the fact he just scooped up a dead body, they kind of almost have a cattle-like demeanor to them. But very clearly right. demonic in nature. So, I'm going to ask you all for stealth checks, but also, what would you like to do? So, I Why can't help but see this. Right? Yes, yes, crying still a free action. That looks yeah. like two people. Yeah. Stealth first, I'll get to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, insane 30. Fuck. Okay. Uh, 18 for farewell. Sure. 16 for glory. 19. Okay. okay. Uh, you will hit. An uh, epic level of um, control here. What about Cora? So, Cora had a. Uh, 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 19. 19. Yeah. 19. Uh, oh, okay, I do, yeah. So, between you all, you've got an expert rogue who's pointing out all of the um, potential pitfalls of your decisions. But still, you manage to get a pretty good roll on uh, well uh, sorry a, a pretty good uh, effort on skimming through these streets on a fairly fast carpet bear in mind this carpet is not overladen yeah it's meant to carry much more than this so it's going at quite a fair crack and yeah you're banking around corners uh you hear something coming really rapidly and so you end up perching the um the carpet on a low slung roof you think it's like a, a, a bunch of woodsheds or something and then a bunch of feral dogs just run out hell for leather and then a few minutes a, a, a few seconds behind them one of these casme type creatures just goes zzz, straight past really fast seemingly ignoring you guys um as it pursues these dogs and you carry on and you find yourself here. So, yeah, uh, no problems there. You enter this spot and you come in completely quietly. And that's why I needed to know, because now I can describe the rest of it. You do see the shoveler shoveling up, but also because nothing is trying to track you, they're tracking the other thing that they were tracking beforehand. And you watch as one of these uh, shovelers starts to sniff close to this tree. And as it does so, you hear a muffled cry of a little girl um, that is suddenly cut off. But it's not cut off with a scream or the sound of an attack. And you're close enough that you'll be able to hear it. It's a cry that seems to have been cut off by somebody else putting their hand over um, the little girl's mouth. 
and uh, as that moment of sound goes out, some of these uh, shovelers do get quite agitated or excited, and they're starting to mill about. To the left, there is a small side alley. Um, I know that I put the the uh, carpet out so that it's sticking out into the side alley, but for now you're kind of tucked around a corner, and you Simon. know that there's... Mm -hmm. I... I assume because of my insanely high passive perception that I can pick that out. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, you uh, all hear it. Yeah. I will make from he uh, here, Yeah. Uh, using thermaturgy, I will make the sound of people running. Okay, so uh, let's see. What colour is Farewell? Farewell is... Okay, yep. I can I can see where you're going there, and so they're running towards the others. Okay, we will do that in just they're, a sec. Well, they're we... running, they're running towards this part. Is sure. Why I want them to do it. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'll just finish the description, and then uh, you absolutely can throw that in um, with your ridiculously high uh, passive perception. You would have heard it crisper and probably before everybody else. Um, the main reason why all of you heard it, by the way, is that your stealth score was so high, thanks to Corinne's role, uh, that you came in <laughs> in perfect silence. <laughs> so you were able to Boss hear it without, without, a, uh, without a perception check. Uh, so yeah, uh, I will point out to the left of you, there is a shoveler that's kind of coming in your direction, but it has no idea that you're here. Farewell throws the thaumaturgy in of people running which I think is still within the uh, realms of thaumaturgy. And uh, there's some definite excitement. And in the confusion, uh, I'm going to roll a couple of intelligence checks. They are not known for their intelligence. Yeah, dumb as a bag of bricks. Uh, they all turn around to where the running is, even the one where the running seems to be going towards it. And <laughs> the... Yeah. Uh, you watch as the uh, Mama shovelers... made them big, not smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the shovelers go past. So the only one I'm going to give as a uh, as a potential danger is the one that I'm highlighting at the moment near the tree. That shoveler, because of its size, is going to try to shifty between the tree and the uh, and the house. Okay. And from what you can tell, the, uh, the the people who are in that tree, you can't see them at the moment, but you detected them from where the sound is. They must be in the foliage of the tree itself. They're not right on top, because anybody who's climbed a tree will know you can't get to the very top branches. You can't sit on top of the canopy. Uh, so they are somewhere in the middle. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fear check on uh -oh. the, uh, the, the two people inside. Um, the girl does it with advantage, but uh, the guy doesn't. So the guy gets... Okay. No, that's good. The guy passes. Uh, advantage on the girl uh, because he's holding her. Fail. Yeah, he's holding her tight, so she gets advantage. And natural 16 on the dice. She passes as well. Uh, <laughs> so you watch as the tree shakes and... Not that you guys see it, but I will tell the uh, not, uh, not that your characters see it, but I will tell the players is that when that tree shook, he hold up, he held on to her for dear life, <laughs> and she she basically just cried quietly into his hand, um, and so yeah, uh, that goes past, and uh, the this one here that's up by the well moves forward. The remaining three mull around in their current area. They don't. Uh, they didn't hear the thaumaturgy. Uh, but they, they weren't going for the tree either. They were just too far away. So. I I, I lean forward and I, I, I whispered to Eclipse. And I go, um, do you think you can get them out of the tree? Maybe. For Eclipse's uh. Uh, point of view, you can, at the moment, jump from the carpet to the nearest set of roofs. So oh, if yeah, you so want to do the rope thing and, and do the uh, the roof runner oh. thing, now is your yeah. time to shine. <laughs> yes, yes okay. I will keep my stealthing and I will run over here to where they are. <laughs> okay. Stealth, uh, stealth, 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 stealth. 
because that's what all rogues do is, is shout stealth, 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 stealth. Um, yes. Yeah, okay, so Parkour. I'm gonna let your I'm gonna let your thirty stealth uh, roll on, yeah. Mm. But the only time when that thirty doesn't apply, so you jump from rooftop to rooftop. You've got a climb speed as a tabaxi. This is your thing, okay? So you get across both roofs, no problems at all. I'm not even going to ask for a roll. However, mm -hmm. jumping into the tree is something different. So, uh, uh, but yeah, still I, within I, kitty I, limits, okay? So yeah. I'm going to give you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not necessarily jumping into a tree at the moment. I am. Um, okay. uh, so using my mage hand, I will essentially make it because normally it's invisible but i will make it visible for them and kind of wave in their hand and kind of point towards my direction so they can see where i am <laughs> okay where are you putting the mage hand because in front of see... i don't think you can see them at the moment give me a perception check well i i'm right next to the tree i'm right yeah, here he told you that the tr uh, that they were in the uh... tree these people have deliberately hid themselves inside mm -hmm. the tree and i've already written uh i've already uh uh, rolled their stealth check, so uh, go for it. Give me okay, a perception check. Uh, perception, I think that is a 18. Okay, so you can see, not clearly, but you can see a mass in the tree that is either the world's biggest bird nest or it's the people that Farewell was referring to. Ah. Yes. Well, I will guess it's not the world's biggest bird nest, and then. Um... I said, how my mage hand wave like in like not completely in their faces, but just a little way off, and then like point to where I am. <laughs> okay, uh, you do see the top of the giant bird's nest uh, <laughs> turn in your direction, but there's no response. They don't communicate with you in any way. Smart. Um. um see, so how do I get these? People. Let me say what I was going to say before. Cool, cool. Um, message, to... cool. Let me say what I was going to say before. If you do want to jump into the tree, it will require a certain amount of finesse. If you pass the check, you'll retain your 30 stealth. And because it is within kitty limits for you to do so, because cats jump into trees, I will allow you either an acrobatics or athletics check with advantage. To in order to do so. Okay. Uh, sure. I will jump into what? What were you gonna? What was the crew crew about? I didn't hear it. Don't, don't you have the message, Catrio? No, I don't think. I, I thought you did. did. I could have sworn you used it. Let me check. Um. Or we... spell is message is no. no, I have friends, mage hand, and minor oh. illusion. Um, Simon, are we um, trying to get to the north part of this map, essentially? Is that, Do we okay, know yeah, where we're trying to go? So, I've placed another one of those triangular markers, if you go to the top of the, uh, the, the map, Kate. Yeah. Uh, there's a big red arrow pointing to the, uh, the road that you need to take to go to uh, the Green Mansion. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yes, I will jump in the tree then. Okay. Right. Give me uh, either an athletics or an acrobatics check with advantage. Well, you we have a good acrobatics, so uh, that's dex based, if I remember correctly. Yes, and that's I am right. proficient in it, so that yeah. it should be. Because jumping isn't roll... really the challenge here. Hmm? I rolled double 12s, but plus 9, so 21. 21, <laughs> yeah. So you, you do something that's worthy of film, uh, Corinne, in that. Uh, you leap, and as you do so, you, you narrow your body in a way that only a cat can. You stretch your full length, and you go through the foliage like an arrow. Um, once you're in the foliage, and, and, and literally, you make no more sound than the wind currently is doing with this foliage, or a bird flying past. Certainly not enough to, uh, to um, highlight your presence to the shovelers as they're going mm. off to Farewell's, uh, which I think Farewell can sustain. He, uh, I think every turn he can just carry on doing it if he wishes, as Cantrip. Yeah. You're muted, dude. You're muted, uh, Nick. 
duration up to one minute yeah. for Tomatog. Er, yeah, game. I was about to say, I will do it as often as I need to. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so you're, you're going to be uh, putting them on a, on a wild goose chase. That's cool. Um, yeah, if Farewell starts doing that, I will try and help since I also have Farmaturgy and basically make a sound uh, close by where Farewell is doing it, but not exactly where he is doing it, so that okay. they will shuffle around, try to figure out, okay, where is it coming from? Okay, so they're trying to track multiple targets and they can't see them. I like this. I like this. I, I, I put as the only thing about these creatures that, you know, that, that they have is that currently they're quite dumb. So, uh, so for you, uh, Eclipse, you elongate your body and like an arrow, you shoot through the foliage. And as you go through the foliage, you twist around again, as only a cat can. Uh, you twist around the, the front half of your body, find a suitable branch, and then just very gently put your hands on there. And you end up sloth-like underneath this branch, just skittering along the branch, getting to them. Uh, you can see that uh, quite clearly a blacksmith, he's wearing blacksmith's. Uh, a blacksmith's vest and he's got a couple of tools he's got a pair of nasty looking hammers on him uh he's got dirt up his arms it's clear that he was working when whatever went off went off he's got soot on his face he's ruddy still uh there's a smell of sweat on him that suggests that he uh, had been working for quite some time before all this kicked off and he is holding this little girl to his chest and look at at, at first he was looking daggers at you and when he saw what you were He's, and more importantly, he sees the symbol at your belt and he puts his finger, his finger's trembling, he puts his finger to his mouth and points down at the shoveler below um, and he's holding onto this little girl for dear life. Mm. Um, I will, with helping with this... Um... With what they uh, what they are doing for the the, the sound, I will mm -hmm. also with minor illusion create just an image of a person over where the sound is coming from as well. Hopefully Absolutely. Making it. Uh, yeah. Are the yeah, are the definitely. shovelers moving? Like yeah, are they the actually moving, moving in that direction around, yeah. with that time? But like, uh, yeah. are the so ones the that are around the tree that... actually moving across? Yeah. So like, yeah, so I feel I'll, like we'd be like, you. are we? Okay, they're moving. Let's like, should we go? Yeah, like, we need like we need I to move this carpet so they can jump on, right? Move the, uh, carpet somewhere here so at that least, they, at least to here, as yeah. well as Eclipse, or well, Eclipse can help them stealthily jump onto the carpet so that we can just like swoosh away, you know? Yeah, yeah, we're trying to get past. So if we can do what you're doing with the sound and. Uh, I, I can make, uh, yeah, I, I can do minor illusion as well, so I can always do that, but I can't currently see cool. anything. I put a pink woman with a bucket yeah. down, um, yeah. Yeah. and that's the illusion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, But I think I in the meantime, we, we definitely want to be uh, heading heading in this dire direction as we see this, the shovelers f that were here move. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I've made the illusion and the carpet movable by all players, by the way. So you can reposition yourselves um, and reposition the uh, the carpet as well. Okay, so <laughs> you stealthily we've picked up uh, a dead horse the at the same time. I'll move the horse to the back. Yeah, uh, <laughs> scoop up a dead horse. I'm not eating that one today. <laughs> All you need now is Merrick, and you can have a skeletal steed. Straight in the bag of Which, just way, everything, it's not everything. not an option for a necromancer. It Rage should list. be an option for a necromancer. <laughs> you can make it an option for a necromancer. Well, I can, but I can't make it an option in the game that we're on the player on Wednesday nights. <laughs> I want to rock a dead horse. Uh, so uh, you skim your carpet while still making two sets of conflicting footprints and an illusion of a mm. uh, of, uh, of a uh, a villager, and the villagers kind of acting all scared, not making any noise, but the thaumaturgy is making noise, and they're really confused because the noise isn't uh, meshing up with the video. It's like one of our previous episodes, and you know, it's uh, sorry, too real. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just all over the place and they're really really confused right now 
Um, and so you get up to the tree and you are, uh, and I presume Eclipse, you are going to have to try to convince these two people to climb along mm -hmm. a branch and get onto the carpet, right? Or the yeah. carpet's going to be underneath and you have to convince them to drop onto the carpet. Um, yeah. So the carpet com uh, comes out to them and as that's happening, all of the shovelers, the, the five shovelers that are, and I'll move them a little closer so that they're all checking out this woman with the bucket now. <laughs> and being very confused, being dumb as bricks. <laughs> really, really confused um, cow demons. And they're kind of there just looking at this thing and kind of watching as the footprints go underneath them. And <laughs> they get really, really confused and really, really stressed. And all five of them just suddenly go, Hum. Hum. Okay, it's just and bad. <laughs> they, they're just all baying weirdly. That was their turn. Okay. okay. Oh, God. Sure. Right. Quicker, please. We need to. I, I'm, um, I mean, if we now can see these two people and um, which i'm trying to encourage them down onto the carpet as well to help the okay. clips i i will so, essentially and looking make, down like... uh, pointing <laughs> yeah we need to go down oh, yeah. this alley i think but i don't know if we can so no, no, Corinne, can this is how it's going to work this is going to work uh, is that you're trying to entice them down you're trying to do so quietly mm -hmm. which would impose disadvantage because you haven't got your full communication abilities but you're being mm -hmm. helped by kate who I'm sure Cora is looking her most. Cora and kind the of, Eclipse on, can still talk telepathically, just so you know. Oh yeah. yes, Eclipse and Cora can talk to each other telepathically. Oh, oh yeah, so I probably would have told rest. her we're coming with the carpet and all that sort of stuff. So, yep, yeah, sure. Yeah, yep. uh, there doesn't seem to be a range limit on it at the moment as well. So both, um, yeah, both Nick and Glory. Sorry, mm -hmm. Nick and Glory. No, Fa farewell and Glory or Nick and Felicia, uh, you mm. can also speak to each other telepathically uh, until your next long rest as well. You're both linked. Yep. And Yay. you can do that just in the back of your heads, even whilst you're talking to other people. You can do this at instant speed. It's a free action. Um, the So Cora tells you that the, uh, the carpet is there. You nestle the carpet underneath. They just have to drop down. So the... Yeah. The skill of them getting onto the carpet, really not an issue here. It's a big ass carpet. Yeah. Yeah. The big soft thing well. for you is, yeah, nice big soft carpet. Um, the big thing for you is convincing them to get out of their hiding place. Mm hmm. Yes. The yeah, per se, uh, kitty. Yes. Okay. It's, a bit, it's a pretty good hiding place, and we're probably going to be more So you have advantage and oh, disadvantage, gosh. which cancels each other out, so go for it. Yes. <laughs> Just gestures down, safe. <laughs> and with a natural 19 plus 11, that is also a 30. <laughs> oh my god, plus 11! <laughs> yes, I have double she proficiency. Has double proficiency. Double, double proficiency. proficiency. Right. <laughs> They're disgusting, man. Right. You thought I was bad with perception. What? what yeah. you have... How many things do you have double proficiency in? Stealth? Uh, proficiency? Three, uh, four, four, four. So I have stealth, persuasion, things. deception. So, yeah, stealth, persuasion, deception, and investigation. <laughs> wow. Okay. Jeez. She's a cat. Rogues, man. Rogues. Uh, okay, so, yeah. You you go up and you uh, I'm gonna say that I, you, I do you the pass, puss and boots thing. <laughs> I was gonna say I I'm pretty sure you've purred. So as you point down, you purr as if to say, "Hey, it's okay." And uh, the the girl kind of calms. She, you know, she, she's she's not she's still scared, but she's less kind of tense. And the guy just kind of nods this kind of jowly scared nod and he looks uh, he looks below grabs hold of the branch and he's going to try to drop down uh, he's not going to have to roll to drop down that's easy 
it's how much noise he makes on the branch. Okay, it has to be pretty significant because you guys, with all of your thaumaturgies and your illusions and all the rest of it, you've raised the diff for them to lo notice him like crazy. Yeah, so it, he has to really mess up here in order to do Is there a way we can help him? Or like, oh, no. uh, yeah, absolutely, because you persuaded him and as he starts moving, you can kind of guide his hand onto the thing. So I will yeah. give him uh, advantage on this as well yeah. as he is going to do a stealth roll. Blacksmith's not known for the stealth. Ah. A 14 on each of the dice. Okay. Not the worst. So, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, it's not so bad. He gets a DC 16. Mm. And I'm just going to roll uh, two with disadvantage. Pff, double four. But that lot don't see him. Oh, don't hear him. <laughs> a natural 20 and a two. So, uh, yeah, you are safe. Uh, he grabs hold of the branch, and with this huge, huge arm, a real kind of stout arm, he does a one-handed pull-up in reverse from the branch <laughs> until his arm is fully extended, and he's hanging out of the tree like the world's weirdest fruit. And uh, just at that point, you know, he kind of nods to Cora. Cora nods back. He drops himself onto the carpet and lands perfectly. Not three-point landing perfectly, but he lands kind of... And um, he lies down on the carpet, hot cradling the girl um, in his arms. And he's oh, so he big. Oh, he brought the girl she's... with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, that's, what, that's what I mean with the oh, one-handed yeah. uh... one pull-up, is that she oh. was in the other arm, and he just yeah. one-handed pull-up lowers himself down to the carpet, and they are down. They are fine. Yes, uh, I will. Can the cat is... jump down on the carpet now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, do me a ridiculous stealth check. Just to check for natural <laughs> ones. Right. Uh, with a 14, that is a 20. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of nowhere, the cat appears. <laughs> is, is this Never guy mind, still man. here? Right uh, in front which of us. Guy? This guy I'm pinging. Uh, this uh, oh, uh, the shoveler. Yeah. That one and those the shoveler, two. Yeah, yeah the so... shoveler ahead of you. He's currently... Um, oh, sorry, I didn't move those. So he was going in this direction. He's about to shovel up this corpse. Okay. okay. I, I'm so, gonna... is, so is this guy and this, this one is kind of catching up behind. So you have a feeling that uh, soon... They're going to hear the footsteps and the illusion, and they will start going down and to the left as yeah. you see it. I I'm going to be tapping and pointing people and trying to indicate going maybe this way and round the back of the house. I know that the map doesn't go there, and then up here, you know, like, because we're right where these guys Sorry, are. Sorry, map doesn't just... go there, can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a dead yeah, end! Of course. of course. It can be a dead <laughs> well, end, then. I mean, you know. Uh, there's just a lot. I mean, uh, no, I, no, I might I... also try and indicate making the noise further away because it's really close. Like, What's the range right on minor illusion and thaumaturgy? Uh, My dearest my... DM, it is 30 feet. 30, 30 feet. feet. So at yeah. the moment, you're just about getting away with it as it yeah. stands. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll say you can get away with it. I know it's like 36 odd feet. I just saw the uh, uh, the arrow you put up. Uh, but mm. the, it's skittering around the place, so you know, you're kind of echoing it off buildings and things. I'm cool with that. Um, okay, so you're going to try to bank the um, the carpet off to one side. I kind of like this idea. So let's do it. There's got to be a role involved, let's face it. So what I'm going to Obviously. say is... Um, whereas before you've kind of been on a lookout, which is why I allowed all of you to roll stealth. In this case, I'm going to allow one pilot and one spotter to pull off this maneuver. Okay. Which I assume is going to be Corinne and somebody else. And, uh, you don't roll with advantage. You roll one each. Yeah. Cause you're both contributing to uh, a particular act. Will the, will the so... spotter be a perception check? Yeah, would it be a uh, deception or a stealth? My stealth it, is a plus six. Both of them will be stealth. Both okay. of them will be stealth. 
Oh, my stealth is not good, so I, I it's only a plus yeah. two, and I'm not got <laughs> Okay, I might be plus six, so I think it's us two, Corinne. Okay, yeah. so Corinne and, and Kate go for it. Yes. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I'd be glory, not oh, no. I got a natural 19 <laughs> oh, no. plus six. Did you not oh, one? oh no, oh, no. Damn it, I did well. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do I have? I have. Do you get reliable talent at night? Do you have no. Uh, inspiration? No, I do not, because I think I used it okay. another time. I used to have it. It's okay. One, yeah, so one of you still got did, a. Did a you not one? Thing, so. <laughs> With a nat one, it's a 14, though. So. That's, oh, that's yeah, a 14 and a 25. Still not the worst. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so. You. Um... How do I want to do this? Okay. Yeah. So, Kate got a 25, I believe, because plus 6 on a 19. Okay. That's good. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for this. So, Corinne, you, uh, you screw up, but you screw up like a professional, as in you fix it straight away. Yeah. <laughs> Where somebody else would have, would have clipped that branch or hit that tile or whatever you uh i'm actually going to go with a tile because i can I, I can think of a better narrative for that so as you're swinging the uh the carpet around you're paying attention to the front end and the back end clips the tile the tile gets uh knocked just off and it's about to slide off the roof and go ting 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 ting, ting clink and with your cat-like reflexes, you leap from the front of the um, the, uh, the the carpet to the back and catch the tile. Yeah. So all that's happened is it just went tink, and then you caught it. Right. So I'm still going to punish you for a natural one, but because it's a 14, it's not that much of a punishment. So what's happened is a minuscule sound. Yeah. Now, the good news is, is that your compatriot got a 25, okay? Which means that the incidental roll that I'm about to do has a plus five to its DC because Kate, once she hears that tink, grabs hold of the carpet and books it out of there. <laughs> right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll for... Who am I going to roll for? I'm going to roll for this dude, okay? The one I've just pinged in green. The one that's up by the... Um, by the well he's going to turn around and i'm going to roll for his reflexes actually i like this idea i like this idea initiative only with cora oh my right? God. but cora on top of her initiative gets an extra plus five for the 25 she previously did oh dear roll well so 25 is five tiers of success and uh, that's a really old D and D term, by the way. Uh, and uh, I'm going to roll my initiative versus your initiative. You get your initiative modifier, your regular one, and a plus five on top. Okay, so you have to monumentally screw up, and you also get Stop your lucky feet on the Stop adding the pressure! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a seventeen. Seventeen. Oh god, I'm not good at maths. Uh, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, so twenty-six. Is that right? Twenty four. Is it? Uh, yeah, twenty six. I'm, I'm adding mine. Se Seventeen plus seven. Uh, plus seven. Twenty six. Because seventeen plus yeah. seven is twenty four. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry then. Twenty four. <laughs> okay. So this is what happens. There's this sudden tink as the tile goes off. Eclipse leaps, catches the tile. Right, Cora realizes what's happening, and without pulling the carpet from underneath the jumping cat, which would be funny, but be me being a dick, um, uh, the second that um, Eclipse lands and catches the tile, Cora books the um, the entire thing. So if I grab hold of all of you here, should be able to do it. I may end up dragging the horse with me. Um, <laughs> You're, you're dragging the monster the as well. You're moving the, the monster and the and the and some other dead thing. 
I, I don't know. But all the same, you go off to the side. I don't think we need a map at this point anyway. So you book it down the side alley, and a fraction of a second after the last tassel on your carpet goes around the corner, that creature goes <clears throat> and looks in your direction, seeing nothing there. So you're now hurtling down a side alley. Um, and he was you... over there before you started moving things. Yes, there he is. Oh yeah, because uh, I I pressed. Yeah, yeah I, know, I I did I did a thing. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me put him here. There you go. He was there. Um, Basically, we want to get up. So he here. turns around, but you guys are gone. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we're not going to use the map now. We'll, okay. we'll put it there as a reminder just in case. Um, but the illusion drops because you're too far away. The footsteps drop. Simon, and that that's yeah. why I was going to uh, show things. Because when we're up here, because if we go around that building, we yeah. should be so that we can create a new illusion and footsteps in this alley where we're currently flying through. And that okay. way they should run over there so that we can go switch up to where it should be. Oh. Okay, so you're going to go up and over the house, and as you go up and over the house, you're going to um, you're going to throw an illusion behind you, and they're going to go around the wrong way because you'll be over the other side. I quite like that. I quite like that as a bit of a rope a dope. Um, I'm going to say Cora is the one piloting because Cora did the thing last uh, yes. time. Yes. So as Cora is piloting the uh, uh, the thing, you you just turn around and say, "Go over the top. We'll drop illusions." And uh, so your illusions, you don't need to do any rolls for those. I need to, to do intelligence checks against your spell saves, uh, which I'll do in a sec. Uh, but again, these guys are, as I say, uh, dumb as a bag of bricks. And um, what I would like for, from Cora, though, is you know you can't go too high in the air or you will hit... You're graffitiing all over my nice new map. I'm so, I was just, trying to move yeah. myself, and I just ended up drawing on it instead. <laughs> you kept the you kept the paintbrush on, didn't you? Here we go. Let's clear. Let's clear. There we go. Nice. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> you can draw Excuse you. Back, I like yeah? my battle plans. Well, write it back on then. Um, so <laughs> uh, you can move the illusion. I did give you a, an illusion that you can move around. Here we go. There, there's yeah. the illusion. There um, we go. So. Um, you know, Kate, that you've got to stay quite low or the Cosmes will see you, yeah? So you've got to hurtle over the top of this building and back down the other side without throwing any of the passengers off because you're going to be yeah. doing some angles here, yeah? Um, and um, and doing it kind of as a clean, uh, a clean thing. So what I want you to do, Kate, is... Uh, it's not the world's hardest manoeuvre. It is just an arc. Um, but I do want you to do me a dex check without um, proficiency, because you're not proficient in carpet. Do you want me to do this? Can I help? Nope, she's the we pilot. Will I'm be soon. helping. Will be I mean, I'm... Carpet soon. Yes. To be fair, this uh, is when a halfling is flips. a good thing. Oh, yeah. that, that oh. little one's been nerfed. I'm yes. sad. I'm a sad panda. Don't worry, I can roll okay. a two, so. <laughs> okay, so is this isn't a dex save, is it? It's just a dex... Nope, just a straight dex check. Mm, so amazing. just add your dex mod. Nine. Eleven. Eleven? Mm. That's the DC ten. I said it was a simple oh. manoeuver, but Ooh. it was a DC ten. Uh, DCs where you don't have a skill check and it's just a straight attribute check. Straight attribute t uh, checks are only really used for uh, basic actions. Basic actions can't go that high in DC, whereas proficient and um, uh, class checks tend to be a lot higher in DC. And any save as well can be potentially quite high. Uh, but yeah, it was just a DC 10. It was just piloting a simple arc up and over. Um, but if you'd screwed that up, if you'd got less than a 10, which you didn't get far off, um, then everybody on the carpet would have been doing acrobatics checks to see whether they get thrown off and onto the roof. And then after that, it's falling damage and all sorts of shenanigans. So uh, well done. Well done. Um, 
yeah, you get over the other side and uh, right. Let's let, let's move some of my toys around, shall we? Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> oh, well done, Felicia. You've done footprints and you've done sound. <laughs> uh, I approve. <laughs> so, as you start making the sound, the uh, the as I say, these cattle-like shovelers start walking in this direction. And the one thing that is over here is a good supply of um, corpses. Of corpses. <laughs> And as you're starting to make the illusions, they start getting confused and they make their way over and they make the conclusion that the uh, the corpses are what they <laughs> were looking for and they start eating up and shoveling the corpses. Good. And while they are shoveling their faces with corpses, we will do this smooth maneuver that I have drawn <laughs> at the top of the map. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, your illusion will be there long enough because it's still within 30 feet at the moment. It'll be there long enough for you to be partway through this maneuver before they fizzle. And by that time, they'll be gorging on dead bodies, as you say. So um, I'm going to make this a much easier check. So once again, Corinne and Cora, give me another... Uh, stealth check each, uh, but the DC here is going to be uh, both of you with advantage. In fact, that that oh. represents it. Nice. See, we can do stealth. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. I'd rolled double sixes. Uh, Twelve. Okay. Well, luckily for you, I got a fifteen plus thirteen is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. So this, this time over. it's yeah. So this time it's actually um, eclipse that points out to Cora that this bush here um, has some bunting that is just kind of flying off the end. And if you'd flown into that, you would have pulled the bunting and pulled the um, the branches of the bush, making quite a lot of sound. And uh, you managed to duck your way around and hurtle on to the green mansion. So, nice. Well done, guys. You, uh, you have managed to get neatly through this challenge, running this gauntlet against the shovelers, these strange, as I say, harvesting creatures made by the architect. Brute force, incredibly hard to kill, as in they are armoured and quite clearly had some hit points on them as well. Um, and I think being that it is uh, 10 to 10, that this is a good time for a bit of a bio break for us all. And we'll mm -hmm. come back after the break and you guys can arrive at the green manor. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Now the hard part begins. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for Glory to step up. Oh yes. Head heading to break. He <laughs> as well. Oh, we, uh, I, I actually yes, hit the button. Break, all right. See you in a hit sec, the guys. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. And when we left off, um, we no longer need to roll 20, by the way, Kate. Uh, you guys had managed to get yourself past a uh, a herd of, we'll use a herd as the collective noun, of shovelers. These cattle-like demons are currently going through the city, shoveling up bodies in the city for some strange ends. And they are uh, heavily armoured. Apparently a lot of hit points, just on the description alone. And in the air is an insect-like humanoid uh, that has been identified as looking similar to a Kazme. And a Kazme is a bug-headed, winged, humanoid creature who, uh, they're pretty nasty. And uh, you have managed to evade them by staying down in amongst the buildings so the Kazme did not see you. Um, but staying high enough that uh, you've managed to stealth past uh, all of the shovelers. Not only that, you've managed to pick up a blacksmith and his daughter. Um, and uh, I wanted to put the stakes high, so I put a kid in there. Um, as in, no, you cannot leave these people alone. And you have done the heroic thing. Nick. Uh, <laughs> You've done the heroic thing of uh, picking up this small family and taking them with you to the Green Mansion. You hurtle around a bunch of alleyways, trying to stay as parallel to your intended uh, your intended route as possible. You deviate a little bit from it, but it doesn't take you long to get close to the Green Mansion. You would expect that somewhere of great importance, if they knew it was of great importance, would be heavily attacked. But you also know that the Green Mansion is, for as far as you're aware, uh, a magical item in and, of, in and of itself. The building itself has magical protections, and being that Renata Green has professed to being a divination wizard, has managed to ward it from detection. So presumably, the forces behind the attack can't see it as a priority target. Saying that, there is a small melee that you come up to, but you can see by the nature of the melee itself that you don't have to worry about it and you can quite happily fly up to the front doors. But I will describe certain parts of it. So first of all, there is a barricade that's outside the uh, the Green Mansion. For the most part, you can see that the Grey Cloaks, which are... Uh, <laughs> the Grey Cloaks are the cloaks, that, by the way, that uh, Eclipse wants to steal one. Um, the uh, These Grey Cloaks are... We'll keep um, our eyes out. Yeah, they are standing there behind this barricade and they are intermittently going invisible and then appearing and going invisible. And you can see that the demons that are uh, that, that are coming up, and there's not many here. You can see that there's a shoveler, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, there's another shoveler further down the road, but it uh, hasn't come anywhere near them yet. It's kind of trudging its way up the hill. Um, but there seems to be these grey-skinned, uh, and you recognise the uh, Inquisitor types. Yeah, so these intelligent, grey-skinned humanoids. Um, Don't think they'll fall you, you from can the see that they're in, different, they're in different types of uh, mutation. So they, uh, they've, uh, some of them are mutated one way, some of them are mutated another way. You can see that one of them's got claws, another one seems to have uh, glowing orbs in the palms of their hands. One of them has eyes, you know, just a big set of eyes. Uh, the rest of them just have a blank face and this, uh, this gaping maw uh, with these horrible shark-like teeth inside them. 
Um, one of them seems to have uh, mutated its arms, so it has three tentacles coming out of each shoulder, and they are attacking uh, the various green employees. But you don't see any dead green employees anywhere. Some of these inquisitors, as they're running up to the grey cloaks, the grey cloaks are seemingly randomly turning invisible and not. So they're making it so that effectively you think if they all went invisible and stayed invisible, that they would try to get around the invisibility in some way. But because they're kind of switching on and off, the Inquisitors are slightly confused and they are moving as they're doing this as well. So they're kind of playing three card Monty with a bunch of mostly women in grey cloaks. You do spot uh, Corinne, for example, spots uh, the drow that she tried to take the uh, um, the cloak off before, oh, yeah. who is al well, alive and well <laughs> and pulls out a pistol crossbow, fires it into the neck of one of the... Uh, inquisitors and you see as these blackened veins start creeping uh, through the uh, the creature's body and it seems to as you look a little bit closer it's actually a very dark green rather than a black and this uh, is the inquisitor with the eyes and it turns to her makes this huge smile pulls out the bolt and the poison just starts to retreat and it starts to weep out of the neck and it just smiles at her, at which point she pulls out a cruel-looking short sword, dash, uh, dashes forward, and decapitates the creature before it manages to regain uh, its health back. Also, the, um, the shoveler that's right in front of the barricade has this, um, this dwarven woman who's not a great cloak she's uh she seems to have a, a kind of a mismatch of clothing on uh and you know that a lot of the, the sea folk the free folk um uh as they're called um in although the free folk is a bit confusing because the people of freetown call themselves the free folk as well um they uh the people who live on the sea and are part of the fi pirate faction uh the nation of the seven sails they tend to wear this kind of mismatched clothing as well. Um, and it seems to be almost a badge of honour that they've gone to so many cultures that they, they wear uh, lots of different types of cloth and different styles, uh, deliberately mismatching them until the cacophony itself becomes its own distinctive style. She's wearing that. She's got this beautiful full head of cornrows um, that's going down her back that's held together by metal clasps. And uh, she runs up to this... Um, uh, to the shoveler pulls out uh, this gigantic gun on her back that seems to have all sorts of bits and pieces coming off it looks really steampunk really crazed and she, uh, as this uh, this creature coming up to try to uh, to take her she slides underneath the body before the jaw can drop down she puts the um she puts the gun between its legs, although you don't think there's one of those there. So, you know, uh, you don't think there's like genitalia or something. These are demons. Um, and uh, uh, you can hear her say, hey, you seen one of these before? And pulls the trigger. As she does so, there's this huge shotgun sound. Um, she's actually firing thunder energy into the beast uh, onto the underbelly, which doesn't seem to have as much armor as the carapace I described on top. Um, there's this sudden... As the um, the shoveler opens its mouth, with a nimbleness that you haven't seen in many dwarves, she kind of commando rolls out the way of it. Now she does so. She pulls a satchel from the small of her back, kind of the lumbar region of her of her back, and she throws the entire satchel into the uh, mouth of the shoveler. She backs up and goes, fire in the hole! <laughs> twists the barrel of her gun, a little flame flickers out the end, and she fires uh, effectively a burning hand, so a flamethrower out the end of her gun and into the mouth of the shoveler before it can close its jaw. And at that point, the players will know, if the uh, characters have never seen it before, that that satchel was full of black powder. And this shoveler detonates. She um, hits the deck as this thing explodes all over the place. Uh, it even distracts the um, the Inquisitors, who their inquisitive nature uh, needs to know what this large release of energy was. They turn around. One of them gets killed because they turn around uh, by a grey cloak who puts a garrote 
of all things, around its neck and just goes and with the razor wire uh, takes the head off cleanly in one go. And you notice that the uh, the woman that, uh, that did it, human woman that did it, um, as she as the arms kind of come out of these robes, there's some guns on this woman's arm. And you realize, yeah, they may wear robes as part of their uniform, but they seem to be mixed. Not all of them are priests and uh, and arcanists like uh, Renata Green. Her grey cloaks are multidisciplinary. And um, the dwarf kind of spins around on the spot um, and uh, knowing that the explosion has got the attention of some of the Kazme, uh, and you can see that uh, two Kazme come out from behind a building and start flying in that direction. She pulls a lever, turns a dial, cocks the gun, points it in their direction and fires a giant net that ca uh, captures both Kazme, um, tucking their wings in and they plummet down to the floor, at which point two of the grey cloaks uh, misty step over there and start stabbing them with glaives. Mm. Um, they clearly have got this under control. And if Rodrigo was still playing with us, um, Aiden would have no, uh, would have recognised from his memories that that is uh, uh, Bloodwind Bloodaxe, the person who designed his gun. So, yeah, that was a bit of Rodrigo content that I kept in. Uh, so they're holding the line. And... We do miss you. Yeah, yes. we miss you, dude. Um, and you park your your giant the <laughs> uh, giant carpet yeah. against these huge double doors. Um, the double doors get thrown open, and there's a kind of popping noise of a ward breaking as they open up, and um, you get pulled inside. And uh, 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 the last person gets off, and as Farewell reaches back for the carpet, the carpet goes limp, and he just drags this huge <laughs> ottoman in after him. Yeah, thank guys. <laughs> Couldn't have waited like two minutes. Hurry if up! Outside was... <laughs> if outside was chaos, could... inside is like a wasp's nest gone crazed. Uh, people are just running about left, right and centre. There are people running over Farewell's carpet, so he's having to say, excuse me, as he's going past. Um, <laughs> and they're dashing backwards and forwards. There are people casting spells at the walls here, um, reinforcing wards or repairing things or getting rid of things. And you can see that all the rooms are full of arcanists. Um, and you do notice the uh, um, arcanist warforge that you spoke to, Eclipse. Is there saying, no, no, come back, come back. That, no, it's not working. You need to come back as this Warforged is um, uh, holding a button on the back of their neck and uh, using a, an, an enhanced form of message spell. Hmm. Um, this seems to be like a headquarters, almost like a 999 call center. And um, they are... Uh, clearly mobilizing their forces throughout the city and uh you can hear uh, pe uh as uh, people are there saying no no that's that's not going to work anymore you need to come back uh come back and we'll uh, we'll figure something out for you no nope. yeah you you guys run okay uh units uh four seven and twelve if you can go and meet at the crossroads what we want you to do is pair up we want uh uh, at least two members of four uh, and at least two members of 12 and the rest can scatter out and uh, we're going to do a mixture of uh, divine magic, uh, trickster magic and we're going to do some uh, a, a bit of fighting on top of that, see if that works. If it doesn't work, don't be afraid to run, you're not being traitors here, we need to keep numbers, keep options open, we need to make sure that this is an intelligent battle. Keep, go uh, keep going and this is a halfling uh, guy who is just kind of, he's just his eyes are glazed over. He's just got bright white orbs for eyes as he's um, talking through his badge um, and uh, directing the battle. Um, you can see that sat on the stairs is Olivia. And Olivia Stone looks so rough. Um, she's still there holding her uh, silvered rapier in her left hand. Uh, she's having her right arm sewn back on. And something large, like a shark bite, has been taken out of her right-hand side to the point where, if you didn't think she was undead before, 
You kind of know it now because uh, four of her ribs are exposed and um, there's currently a bandage holding in her intestines. And she's just there watching as somebody is sewing back on her arm. Yeah. You're here. Hi. Uh, uh, where's Aiden? Where, where's Aiden gone? He's Someone gone. help uh, me with this fucking carpet. <laughs> A couple of people help you roll up this carpet. Uh, um, uh, he's I... gone to... Safer than us. What, what's the place he's from? Uh, he went uh, He but... went back to his home. He got sure some he leads his on his mother and decided to follow them. Well, I guess some of the uh, uh, the answers, and she's holding her ribs, and you have a feeling that when she saw you guys, her hand went to her ribs. Before that, she didn't, and she seems to be hiding her, you know, her undead nature from you guys, um, yeah, probably sure. because she thought that Aiden was there, and she she's. Uh, holding onto it, and then uh, someone hands her like a, a coat, and she presses it to her side. Um, but they carry on sewing her arm on, kind of Igor style, uh, to I the will stump. Just push, push my way through and just pull, move her coat out of the way, and I'm, I'm going to. I want to. I want to see what I can do to just patch this up because when you touch, fucking, when you touch her, state. you realize you probably can do better with the bandaging. Um, but it, it, even before you try a healing spell, you realize healing's not going to do a damn thing. Oh, no, I wasn't going to waste magic on her. I mean, she's undead. She's, yeah. It's a foreign. But, okay. <laughs> but uh, the, do me, the, actually, this is, a, this is actually an important thing, because uh, uh, Olivia is a big character in your, in your personal storylines. Uh, do me a medicine check. Well... Farewell's good at that. Oh, actually, I am. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's uh, 27. 27, yeah. Uh, so, yes. yeah, you can see that uh, the bite did get rid of a lot of surface skin, but there's enough... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to go a little technical here. I come from a medical background. That's not to say I'm a doctor, but I work, I work a lot in the uh, pharmaceutical trade. So um, uh, you can see there's enough uh, of the internals to work with. And uh, you look at the muscle wall and a few other different bits and you're like, yeah, I can do this. And you start you start kind of pulling the muscles into place and all the rest of it. And you uh, you realize that there's uh, a, a bit of the diaphragm and stuff that you can use with some of the skin. And you're starting to sew her together as best you can, just so that nothing comes out. And in just a few minutes, as she's uh, going to have this conversation with you, by the time we finish this conversation, uh, you've managed to get it so that she can stand up and walk around without anything falling out. Yeah. At uh, which point somebody comes up to her with one of her spare patented Piper jackets and she, she kind of puts that on top, looks at herself and goes, yeah. Um, so whilst you're doing that, she says, uh, looks like you were looking in all the wrong places. We're sending you out into the middle of the countryside. Ah, uh, and the problem was right here. Ah, uh, we shouldn't have sent you on that wild goose chase with regard to Merrick, especially considering we've heard from him. He's here in the city. Uh, uh, oh, oh, that's quite useful. Well done. Uh, as you find two bits and sew it together, she's, uh, you, you start off with just a quick stitch to uh, stitch part of her stomach back together. And she's, uh, she comments on that. Yeah, uh, he came to us, said that you'd met him on the road, investigated him and cleared him. Ah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he, he showed us his research. Uh, Renata found it fascinating, but she said it wasn't going to be of any help. She seemed really certain of it, actually. Uh, perhaps he was following his research after all. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, uh, he's out there now. He's out just helping people out. He had friends in the city. Uh, I think there's uh, some goblin families and things that uh, uh, he wanted to go and help. He said that uh, he had to go and help those who... Uh, were misunderstood and could be revealed as part of this. I don't know what he meant by that, but anyway, uh, yeah. So yeah, he, uh, he went out there and, um, he, uh, uh, he's left pretty much everything behind. Uh, he even offered his, uh, his thing, his, uh, what's it called? The canister, the thing with the swirly stuff inside 
Renata said that she didn't want that, that it wasn't her thing. Uh, uh, but yeah, he, yeah. He, he it wouldn't his... be her thing. Yeah, yeah he, he yeah. left about three research books, all written by him, and I, I should imagine those were the only copies. I, you know, Renata said that she keep them safe and have them scribed and and give him back the originals and things. But uh, yeah, he he seems to be helping out. What whatever you said to him, well done. He felt honour bound to come back to the city apparently. So uh, yeah, um, but yeah, we sent you away, sent you to the wrong place. Sorry, because you uncovered all of this, didn't you? You uncovered the uh, the ooze, but the ooze is just. I, we think that's just a byproduct. Um, we've Where seen is it the center? Do some stuff. Where are we they coming out... from? Well, the we we thought it was the university to start off with. Uh, we were looking into, well, as as we looked at before, the, the magic gone awry. Some research are doing something weird. Uh, that's where Merrick helped out as well. He said he had some theories. But Renata said that uh, he could go out and help his friends, so he, he didn't press that any further. And so, yeah, she said that she had already pretty much got where the source was. At the moment, she's fighting it. She's upstairs. She only talks intermittently. She's very distracted. Whatever the the major creature, the the, the archdemon architect. or whatever it is. The architect. The... Architect. He's calling yeah, himself the architect. Yeah, she she referred to him as the master. But yeah, that, that that's been said. Uh, by the the grey skinned ones, uh, they announced that the architect is coming. It, some other stuff as well. I didn't catch the rest of it. Uh, at that point, I got gored in the side by one of those big buggers. Uh, the um, but yeah, that uh, him. Yeah, she's she's fighting him off. He can't cross over to this plane of existence. Uh, he's too big, or too powerful, or both. I hope it's not both. Um, but yeah, she. Uh, uh, she said that as long as she can keep her focus on him, he won't be able to come through. But uh, his minions are as well. They're slippery. Either that or he's slippery. He's finding a way of getting them through cracks here and there. We managed to find one. We closed it. Uh, well, I say we closed it. Uh, somebody had to uh, put some major power behind that. And then one of those flying buggers came down and killed them just after they did it. Uh, kind of wanted to find out how they did that. But it was a, a researcher from the university. Um, and Aracocra. That's the bird guys, yeah? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, he, he said he, he said he was a, uh, uh, Horizon something. And, and yeah, he, he, he could close the damn thing. Ah, oh. yeah, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah, anyway, go, go up. You can try and speak to her, but if not, there's other people up there who'll speak to you. After, oh. All right. Uh, I need a spare coat, and uh, they give her the coat, and we catch up with the outcome of Nick's role. And she goes, "Ah, that's not bad." And she kind of tests the arm, and the arm is a little sluggish. You can tell it's a bit slow. But she goes, "That'll do. I only need that to hold the shield." Ah, let's go. And she runs up the stairs, and you run up after her up into Renata's study. Hmm. When you go into Renata's study, you can see that behind the desk, Renata is floating about three feet off the floor, cross-legged. Her, uh, her spell book is open in front of her. Um, she's holding an orb in one hand and a scepter in the other. And um, this bright white light is just pouring out of her eyes. Sweat is falling down her brow. Her red hair is stuck to her head. Um, and uh, you can tell uh, that she's a bit dishevelled, uh, that she's been, you know, under this effort, and her face is completely in a rictus at the moment. You have a feeling that there's not a single relaxed muscle in her face. Her neck is kind of bulging with the effort, and um, she is holding back this incredibly powerful being. And um, the other people in the room, there are, there are mixed um, scholars, um, that you see before, there was a, an old fella that you saw, saw here before, and they're dressed kind of like him. He's not around. And uh, they're all dressed like him, and uh, there's they're poring over books. She's got a really good library. And they're going, if we put a conjunction between these two spells, and someone goes, but no one's ever done it before. And he goes, that's the point. He's not going to know. Who knows? We only just came up with this ourselves. And uh, they, they're coming up with a lot of different kind of strange and wonderful arcane tactics. Um, 
off to one side, because I said there's kind of study alcoves, the largest alcove, which you sat in before with, um, it was a, a basically a coffee table. A larger table has been dragged over from one of the other sections, and there's a map of the city placed out in front of it. And there is a, uh, a balding man, he's got a, a widow's peak, um, and he is poring over it, and his, his jaw is set, uh, his eyebrows are furrowed, and he's kind of gripping the table, white-knuckled, and goes, Where are the rest of my men? I'm going to go back downstairs and talk to the communicators. And um, you guys know from uh, every coin you've ever seen in the city, in fact, oh. um, that this is Duke Edmund Ostermark the <laughs> Third, Duke of the city. And uh, he turns to two... Uh, two Korea soldiers, you know, the, these are the other kind of majors, you're assuming. And uh, he says, we're going to have to get back to the palace at some point. Get my chevaliers up here now. Lancers, we're going to need to get them to get back. And uh, they snap to attention and say, yes, sir. And he, he, he just shoulder barges past you guys without giving you a second look and starts down the stairs. Don't care. My, my, uh, how rude. I don't care. Uh, so, <laughs> like yeah. So he barges past you, doesn't even acknowledge your existence, but then lots of people have kind of been bumping past you in the chaos. Uh, one of the scholars looks up and goes, Ah, oh, Hawk and Harness, you're here. Good. Uh, we have this... to get a better name than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until you guys get given a name, they name you after the tavern that you've been allocated to uh, as your home. And uh, he yep. says... Uh, Okay, uh, we might have a mission with for you in a second. We're just getting in new intel now. Uh, so, uh, what have they told you so far? Uh, these things adapt. Uh, even like if you're throwing various energy types, people have we been know. using uh, the chromatic sphere uh, spell. Uh, oh, okay. Um, uh, we know we fought, first. We fought some things that turned itself into copies of us. That was not fun. And they also link to you, so if they take damage, you take damage. That yeah, it looks had a particularly. The color drains from his face, and he goes, "Hang on, hang on." Pulls over a sheet of paper, scrolls it down, uh, mutters something over the paper, and all I, the ink that he's just done disappears from the paper. I what I do is because during the short rest, um, I probably would have had enough time to make some notes on. Um, the creatures and um, okay, in 15 minutes i'd say that yeah yeah and glory yeah. probably i will i will open my book because both of them like this sort of thing like dissecting their demonic yeah. enemies so yeah and okay. i will open the book to the relevant page and just go i, I just saved you a job uh, i uh, like this uh, actually um i'm gonna oh. get farewell and glory to do a joint intelligence check um i'm gonna go with Arcana for proficiency. Oh, yes. That's all right for you. I don't have proficiency in that. You've still got a fairly but good intelligence, though. It doesn't matter because I've just rolled a nat 20. Nine. I got a 24. Oh. And a 24. Uh, yeah, you so slide this. 23. You slide this book over to, uh, to him, and uh, suddenly the, the scholar goes. Uh, looks over to Renata and goes, Mistress, his eyes um, light up and he reads your book. And you can hear in a distant voice, Renata goes, More examples of his works. This being is truly a genius. He twists and turns my mind. We challenge each other like a deadly game of riddles, trying to unravel each other's mind. He's stronger than I thought he would be. Far, far stronger. More dangerous than I ever thought he could be. I should have been more prepared than this. And it's clear that she can't hear all the noise that's going on in the room. But when her voice comes out, it comes out with all of her power. And you can hear it around you. It's like the entire house is speaking. Uh. I think to Cora privately... Ah, that's how he was treating her. <laughs> <laughs> I 
more sweat seems to just roll down her open eye uh, without uh, getting her to blink or anything like that. She stares with a thousand yard stare and she says, We need an edge. We need to get out into the city. Uh, we need to find what what we can do to somehow shift things in our favor an edge and then when we know the source when we know how to plug this and stop this bridge between our city and the abyss then we can take it down but first we need to be able to have access to the city the liberty quarter have locked down they've brought buildings down to form a barricade they're using all the guile of the Thieves' Guild to keep their people safe. In the palace, ancient wards are currently being used. They're currently only having to deal with the flyers, something that they're more than capable of doing. But even then, I can hear reports from those below. They all report to me, I can hear it all. A terrible cacophony that I can pick apart, like pulling a strand out of a great tapestry. They are reporting now that outside the palace, larger creatures, larger than the shovelers as they've given them name, they are uh, writhing on the floor, mutating in front of the guards' eyes, out of shot of their crossbows and spells. They can see the claws lengthening, turning into that of a climbing creature. Others, the pads of their hands and feet, grow wide like a tree lizard. They aim to scale the walls. If they can't break them, they'll scale them. There are so many people within. So many people in the various sections of the city. Each place has its own defences, its own solutions. And his creations are able to adapt, even without him directly applying his genius to them. I'm clouding his mind and he mine. I can get in the barest of information, and I should imagine that that is also true of him. You need to find an edge. Speak to my researchers. They'll find one. Something must surface. Something must give a crack in the armor. We must exploit it, whilst the rest of my specialists keep people alive around the city, or this will be for naught. No, not for naught. If this city falls, if everyone from within dies, it will be worth it to close this breach, or the rest of this nation, if not this prime material plane, will fall. I don't know how I know this, but I know this. It comes from a great power, a great power I haven't felt since. And she her voice just gets more faint and you have a feeling she's still talking but at this point it's in her head mm. okay researchers Ooh. who where are the freaking researchers then that we need to talk to <laughs> the guy in front of you reading uh farewell's book his eyes mm. go back to regular eyes he goes that's everyone else in the building miss uh downstairs the, the guys who are communicating with the ground troops they're gathering data as they're as the troops are telling them what's failing Oh, they're, they're trying to get an idea of how fast each one of these demon species is able to adapt naturally. We've got, uh, by the looks of it, the Gemin... Uh, actually, does, he doesn't know the name. Uh, he, these uh, these linked creatures seem to be uh, quicker adapters than the others. Uh, the they shovelers, all they don't adapt. adapt it almost quickly. doesn't matter where uh, are they coming from. We need to close the gates. At this point, Glory will actually use the mind link willingly so like kiss my item and just ask if farewell should we tell them about the types of demons we ran into in the institute you know the one that touched you and suddenly they knew everything about you because that might be useful here for them well, well i'm gonna rule that farewell like... and his oh, hold, background hold on. means hold that on. he has he has pages of that shit Oh, okay, yeah. good. And I, I, but I only would have shown him the sh the Gemini's. 
because that's what we were talking about. And Farewell so far, yes. is rather protective. Yeah, so far, yes. of, fa Farewell is rather protective of his book and as such. Any yeah, time that's like, you know, it's the whole you give somebody your phone to look at a picture and those fuckers start like trying to swipe to somewhere else. And it's like, oh, they're the worst. Bad. <laughs> bad. You know, so that's. I yes. when you see my cat pictures. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and to be fair, my phone is full of nothing but pictures of my cat. Um, yeah. <laughs> Trouble is the best cat, though. Um, Farewell will respond to, to Glory, and it's like, yeah, probably. Do you think you could convince them that we ran into these on the way here, and these were our observations for killing them? Yes. Give me a moment. Go for it. Alrighty. Uh, are you done with that page yet? Because there were a few others we ran into while we were fighting our way in here. Sure. So, if you look at this page, there were these Give me ones. a very basic deception check. This is a uh, this guy is well under. I'm going to say this is a DC 5. Unless you natural <laughs> 1, he's not going to notice anything odd about Farewell's book. Um that is uh well over 20. Okay, yeah. So you you just kind of just open the... Uh, you take the book back, you flick to the pages regarding the demons of the Institute. You put it in front of him, which is just specifically... Uh, Farewell has uh, taken a few pages just to make kind of like bios of the ones he saw, which okay. doesn't mention anything about the Institute, just that just... It's just like a kind of a bestiary, yeah? Like a zoology textbook. And he, uh, you, you kind of give him the page. Uh, you kind of let him read the pages. He's noting down all sorts of shit, and uh, he goes, "Hang on a sec." Grabs some parchment, puts a hand on uh, one of the pages, and says, "May I copy this, Phil?" Yeah, sure. Uh, he uh, puts a hand on both the pages, uh, uses quite clearly a spell slot, and copies uh, a few of the pages that uh, the glory allow him to uh to do so he goes no this is good this is good man you must have taken out a few of them and there's barely a scratch on you okay uh right as your your 20 plus deception makes him clear oh yeah you guys are heroes man yeah you can you can get through this many demons in one day and um... <laughs> is it yeah is it bad that i'm more upset he didn't compliment me on my penmanship than you know anything else <laughs> mm. and he he ends up uh, giving it to a scribe and says send this out just in case they uh, they end up uh, fighting these things and so yeah the the, the tongue with the uh, the one with the tongue with the weird barb that sticks in people um, mm. your your more comprehensive notes on the uh, inquisitors all of <laughs> those guys um, uh, you've now sent out the details and that will actually affect the battle um, oh nice so the uh, you send that out to the researchers and the researchers just start sending this out to the troops out in the city. They are broadcasting it effectively uh, to uh, everybody, Liberty Quarter and all the rest of it, which is what the guys downstairs are mostly doing. Um, and you go, uh, if you want, you can go back downstairs and talk to the communicators as well as they kind of um, bring in some, uh, some information as well. But in the meantime, if there's something that you specifically want to do in this building, people you want to talk to, you can just name a subject and a researcher will talk to you about it. There's avenues of investigation that you can do from this headquarters. So uh, you're in the war room right now, literally. So mm. um, what would you like to try to discern? Personally, I would like to look into where there seems to be more swarms of the enemies as in uh, larger numbers as that could indicate where they're emerging from as we will get a general uh, uh, look of where there are most enemies and where they are moving from depending on what the scouts have been cool. uh, uncovering yeah. so um you turn around and say i need to know where the attacks are and all the sightings are and the uh, the guy who's there kind of looking through the stuff that he's just got off farewell goes uh dining room and uh you get taken by one of the servants who is just basically a kind of fetcher carrier uh takes you to the dining room and in there is a giant map of the city uh, that's been uh thrown over the uh the large dining table that's there and uh you can see that they have placed markers 
where uh, each thing has come up and the markers are color coded and all the rest of it. These are researchers after all. And you can see all of the distribution of attacks and types of attacks in the city. I would like you to do an investigation check on this. Um, and if you're not proficient in in investigation, I will also accept any proficiency to do with cartography or navigation. If you tell me anything, I can help with any investigation check of what you want to find out. As I say, I'm also doing that, Simon. I'd like to prepare a ritual spell if I can. Absolutely. What's the ritual spell? Commune. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You start doing that. How long does your ritual take? Because it's 10 minutes, minutes plus 11 minutes. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Fine. yeah. Um, okay. But yes, I ask Glory if she needs help with finding out on the map or whatever. Because. Yes, I will tell Eclipse uh, what I'm doing and uh, that I want to discern any patterns between where there are more enemies of certain types and potentially where they might be coming from based on that where uh, the direction they're moving from slash coming from and all of that, yes? Yes. So with all the fervor of a conspiracy theorist in their little den with their tin hats, <laughs> um, the urban bounty hunter Tabaxi, um, her background triggers. And, yes. Um, Eclipse, I would like you to do an investigation check on this map with advantage. Nice. Mm. That's why I wanted Eclipse to help me. So an 8 and an 18 and an 18 plus, I think it's plus 20. Well, I am pretty Equip sure it's plus crazy, 12. crazy, if I remember right. <laughs> Investigation yes. plus 12. Plus, I pulled up plus, your plus character sheet. So, 30. 30. <laughs> so, yeah. this, this goes kind of um, Da Vinci code as the cat, the kitty's eyes get bigger and bigger and she just suddenly sees all the points skittering over the map in her imagination like so many mice. And she's just there, just kind of <laughs> extrapolating all the different things. So, um, wow, uh, I had a list of things to give you, but 30, I'm going to have to give you most of them. So, um, <laughs> okay, with your background, your background is urban bounty hunter, um, arcanist. Archaeologist. Uh, uh, arcane trickster. Uh, so you yeah. Class arcane archaeologist. Things. If you weren't an arcane class, I wouldn't give you one of the points because your background is very important when you're doing checks like this. So here's the thing. Uh, you can tell that the place that they are coming from is above ground. Okay? It is a building in the city. Um, distribution of the various types means that uh, the Kazme that are flying around are flying around as um, scouts more than anything else, that so they are not part of the invasion force. The um, other thing you've noticed is that the shovelers are just there literally to shovel up things, and then if they meet something, they'll attack it, but they are not the main attacking force. The main uh, attacking... shoveler equals distraction, I'll write them. Uh, well, the shovelers are just there mostly to pick up the bodies, to harvest the bodies. Okay. Um, um, yeah, from what you've seen crew. already. Yeah, they're, they're the cleanup crew. Um, and the um, main attack is through bands of these Inquisitor types. Mm. And but looking um, at them now, the Inquisitors, the Inquisitors are a huge title in the Prime Material mm. Plane. You have yeah. a feeling they're the foot soldiers. They mm. are the adaptables that run around the place as death squads finding whatever it is that needs to be taken out adapting to that situation um learning things mm. as they go along uh you nobody have... expects the abyssal inquisition inquisition well i i named them inquisitors <laughs> because they are the inquisitives they go out and check that they go out and gain data and and kill as they do so uh, there are lots of reports of some of the more exotic races, the less seen races around here, uh, being bitten by an inquisitive, or, sorry, an inquisitor, and then the inquisitor running off. 
because they contain data that is absolutely needed by their race. Um, so uh, the, there's a triton that's been bitten, uh, a bugbear in the city. You're pretty sure that the bugbear is Big Ralph. Um, he's the only mm -hmm. bugbear that you've heard of in the city, mm -hmm. and Big Ralph is part of the Green Organization. Um, and uh, you know the 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 bite because uh, they've got a little symbol, little dot they put onto their markers if it's a bite and run, um, which they're explaining as you're pouring over the map. Yeah. And uh, you know uh, when when they show you the list of it, you're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is them uh, gaining data. And it seems to be the Inquisitors are the murder squads, and then the rest mm -hmm. is just decimating the city. Uh, there are some larger demons as well that seem to be living siege engines, and they seem to be just kind of they are like the beaters in a pheasant shoot. They are going around and destroying the weaker buildings to get people out onto the streets running for their lives so that they can be picked up by the others. Uh, I when when that's a uh, thing I have a, I have a question Simon. Mm -hmm. Is that I, uh, I didn't the only am other I thing... cutting in? I don't yeah. want to cut in. No 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 that's that that's fine that's that's most of what I'm uh, I'm giving uh, Corinne um, you know that they have closed the gates of the city on purpose. You also know that the ooze seems to be an incidental thing, uh, that whatever's going on at the moment has excited the ooze and made it feel like it can come to the surface. And that's okay. the arcane part of it all, is that one of the arcanists comes in, explains something about uh, abyssal attunement and chaos calling to chaos, uh, most people would have to do an intelligence check for this, but you've got an arcane background, and you're they're like, yeah, yeah, I heard something about that in my training, and uh, mm. uh, and uh, if you didn't know that, Glory would be able to get it on the spot anyway, uh, mm. where uh, they're saying that the ooze is coming to the demons, um, almost like a, a happy dog going, hi, will you be my friend? And it's coming out and taking all these weird forms. Otherwise, it would be more content to stay under the city. Okay. So, uh, can me. I tell, yes, uh, can I tell with this information where the most likely point of origin is? Yeah, oh. it's somewhere near the university. It's not the okay. university itself, but it's somewhere near the university. Uh, okay. It looks to be, yeah, the, the, you've got a rough area. You've got you've got it within like a nine block radius. Yeah. You have a feeling that once you get to that nine block radius, it will probably be a little easier to get. Um, but you also know by the amount of troops and things that you've seen um, that getting there at the moment would probably be somewhat of a suicide mission. Mm. Um, As you agree with Renata's assessment of the situation, you need an edge. You need to either distract the forces assaulting the city or punch through them. Mm. Uh. I relate all of this. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Kate. Yeah. Um, I. Kate remembers something. I think I remember something. I cannot find it in the notes. So, um, but am I right in thinking that Cora was once kind of given the challenge of next time she was in the office of Renata Green to look to see if there was something there, a mirror or something? Yep. Uh, yes, you were. Okay. Okay, I have re kind of remembered that right. Are we in the office right now? Yes. yes. And you were told just to look in the mirror and... To look in the yeah. mirror. Okay. Yeah. I, while everyone's doing stuff, will wander like over to the mirror and I will look in the mirror. Just act natural. <laughs> yeah, just like, as if I'm like, oh God, we've been in such a... <laughs> I don't know, it's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, you walk up to this mirror and ordinarily you see what the challenge would have been. This mirror is angled in such a way that it is meant to be seen as in full view from where Renata usually sits. But because right now she's somewhat busy, you're ambling up um, well, I say ambling up. You're, you're, you're strolling up to her desk. And bear in mind, you're only just a little bit taller than her desk, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, three foot I've one, I think. That part. Yeah. Yeah, three foot one. You know, yeah. And bear in mind, she's three foot off the floor, you know, 
hovering anyway. So yeah, you just kind of walk up to her desk and all the rest of it, and you're just kind of having a look round. Um, and yeah, there's a mirror right in front of you. Uh, you look into it, and um, you see yourself looking back. But as you're looking at yourself, the one, the you in the mirror, winks at you. Okay. Fun. Do me a charisma saving throw. Ah! Oh shit! <laughs> and I'm completely unaware as I'm preparing my ritual. Uh, I'm so glad I'm a halfling. Oh, wow, you're only all one. Another one. <laughs> That's when she rolls a two. Yeah. Um. Okay. Charisma saving. You're throw. good at charisma. That is a non-natural twenty. Okay. Uh, you feel yeah. the world spinning from underneath you, and you panic for a moment. And trying to gain your sense of self, you are there thinking, you know, do I need to resist this? What? And in the moment, you manage to get this moment of composure and control and command. And your your arcane abilities kick in, and you can feel this Feywild magic being applied and with nobody watching you step into the mirror what uh. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys I, by the way uh, do I, I Cora surely would remember who had told her to look in the mirror can you remind the me the general him? right the general? was it the general yeah. okay I thought it the was general, yeah. okay cool also, the only so one who could have noticed that because so the Gibbs and Glory are in the other room was Farewell, and Farewell is busy with a ritual. Yeah. Yeah, Farewell's, yeah. Do Farewell's doing a ritual, you two have gone downstairs, so Cora's just walked up to this uh, uh, this mirror, and uh, I I'm... Yeah, uh, I'm gonna. Yep, um, yep, not yep. gonna over-explain at the moment. Nope. Uh, so you walk straight into the mirror, Cora, and out the other side, and you are currently in kind of like a broom closet, but all around you, every wall is full of books. Now, you don't know a huge amount of books, although you have heard Farewell talk extensively about books, but even you know that the books around you are horrendously, horrendously expensive. Um, Horace probably and... heard Glory and Farewell talk about books together. Actually, yeah, that's that's quite true. And you, you guys have hit a lot of libraries recently. So, yeah, I'm going to say you know enough about books to know an expensive looking book when you see one. You are surrounded by what seems to be thousands upon thousands of books. A uh, thousand. So it's in... not a walking wardrobe style thing. It's bigger than that, is it? It's I was quite, thinking it's quite it... narrow. It's quite narrow. Okay, so it's quite uh, narrow, but, go, but quite... Into... Uh, narrow, but kind long? Of loses its, it, it, it's a weird... It's like you're looking through the world through a fisheye lens okay so it's the just space it's a kind feels of weird, like a five yeah. foot square it feels like you a five foot square but you can see thousands of books in front of you right you've basically gone we need guns but you've gone <laughs> we need books and all the shelves <laughs> have just shot past yeah. yeah yeah for terry pratchett fans you've effectively walked into l space so um you can just see just these books around you and you move your head just slightly and all the books seem to move and you hear a voice that you think you've heard before it's a familiar sounding voice it's quite an authoritative male voice that says that one there Cora the one with the lilac spine and the gold trim that one hmm. and you Do immediately are drawn to one be... particular book yeah, do I get the sense this might be um, Enola's dad? Yeah. <laughs> if you were to put money on it, you have a feeling that the Summer King himself is talking to you. Okay, I'm going to reach Just out so and you pull know, the book. You're talking. Basically, it's your father in law <laughs> or future father in law, so. <laughs> yes, Daddy. You reach out and take the book from the. Uh, uh, from the shelf you look at it and it's got this beautiful 
fine calligraphied elven script that you know you, you have a feeling this is some sort of uh feywild scripting and you have a feeling that you wouldn't be able to read it but then the second you look at it it translates itself in your head and you read that it is a peerage so it is a uh, a list of families and nobility in the Feywild and you open it up flick through it and just momentarily and yeah it's got names um, and it's got who their children are uh, their various marriages and mistresses in some cases and consorts in some cases uh, because Feywild politics and yeah it seems to be just this extensive looking political book um and the the pages are insanely thin even though this is quite a thin tome you flick through it and you have a feeling that if this was done on mortal paper it would be this giant tome <laughs> i'm gonna kind of say out loud quietly out loud why do you want this it's more that i don't want it in her Power. <laughs> there's okay. power Fair in enough. the name, Cora. Power that she holds over some of my kin. It is incorrect that she should have such sway over her betters. I stuff it in my bag of holding. And I start looking and seeing if I recognize any other... If, if there's writing on any spines and if there's anything that catches my attention as potentially useful or or interesting or of use to us in any kind of way or Ooh. or gives her away like who this person really might be in any way uh oh uh to do with him or to do no with... to do with no, Renata. With Renata. i'm wanting to oh, know oh. i'm wanting to scan these and see if it gives me any clue as to if she has any alternative things, the whole the whole okay. issue with the um, the place. You know, I the, have um... placed something here. I have uh -huh. placed uh, at, uh, <laughs> because this was always going to be a thing. It was going to be find a way into this this mirror, and you are um, uh, you're going to have a chance at some things. Plural. Okay. Uh, so... I'm going to look this particularly the on a, on the highest. Uh, some of the highest shelves that I could probably will have to climb or something but I'm thinking you know if you're gonna want something that you know it, you're you're precious about you probably won't put it right at eye level so okay uh yeah okay I I like this idea so <laughs> give me an investigation check Uh, can I I'm gonna uh, before I do as I'm sort of looking around I'm gonna call, kind of call out to him again and say you knew that book what else could c is here that I should know about and see if he helps do me a persuasion way. check do me a persuasion yeah. check first Okay. Persuasion. That's a charisma. 30, 20. Okay. He says, well, that's the question, isn't it? I think it's time we looked around. High time. <laughs> and you now have advantage on the roll. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> Okay. So, and this was investigation, was it? To start with, yes. Yeah, there's a couple of other roles, but investigation to start with. 21. 21. Okay. Uh, so there's two things that you find. First of all, you find... Uh, roll me a d4. <laughs> okay, never pick up d4s. Uh, it's only a one, but I, I guess it's just a okay. Thing. You you find a book, and suddenly there's something in you that just gets drawn to the book. You suddenly get desire for the book, 
and before you uh, have a chance to check yourself, you've already pulled the book off the shelf and put it into your bag. Um, you're not entirely sure why you did that. The second thing is that you see um, a book called The Shattered Glass, and it has a broken clock on the spine. And immediately you can feel your patron smiling smugly behind you, as if he's standing behind you. And you pull that out as well. And you now have a copy of The Broken Glass. You you called it the shattered glass. Is it the broken glass or shattered oh, sorry, glass? Sorry, the sh shattered glass. Sorry, shattered, shattered, glass. shattered glass. But it's got a broken clock on the spine and another a book that I don't know yet because I just stick it. In uh, the yeah, just a book that you really, really wanted. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Next I've... roll, or is there more? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She's. Uh, I don't know. I feel I need to give get me an back arcana out. check. Okay. Uh, no, this is all part of you looking around. Give me an arcana check. <laughs> oh man, those natural ones are doing it for me today. Okay. Um, Good thing you're a halfling. Uh, that's not amazing though. That's an eight. That's an eight. Yeah, you look around and there's a lot of technical stuff here. You're, you're there like something. This, I'm sort of thinking, should Farewell something. should be here. Farewell should be in this room. Yeah, you're really there thinking, you know, Farewell would know what to grab. And you're there, you, you kind of run your fingers over some of the titles and just nothing happening. Okay, uh, final thing. This is your Hail Mary now. Oh, God. I'd like you to do an insight check. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Come on. Oh, all my good rolls have got have, have been taken. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. No. You're yeah. trying to just <laughs> get some idea of who she is as a person. You are what you read, or at least the books that you choose to buy tell you something about that person. And you're just trying to find something personal. You can see a lot of technical stuff here. But the you know, you're just there saying if I can just get a handle on who she is. That would be enough. And you look around, and there's stuff on art. There's stuff on pottery. There's stuff on bricklaying throughout the ages. She's got such an eclectic, uh, eclectic mix of stuff that you're just like, fuck this woman. And you, that's it. You're done. You know. You look around, and you're just overwhelmed by the sheer amount of data around you. I. I would like just before I walk back out of the uh, mirror because I'm like ah, I don't know, but um, I would like to is do we know if an artist is left-handed or right-handed? Uh, you have watched her right. I'm gonna keep it memorable. She's left-handed like me. Left-handed. I will um, bend down and just take the very first bottom book. Hoping that one she won't necessarily notice, but also thinking that might be a quick. I want a quick book. I'm just going to take it, stuff it in my bag, and um, and show it to farewell and oh. people later, and just be like, I'm just going to see if this will give any hints. I have no idea. I'm just taking another it. book, just one book. Okay, okay, I'm willing to do this. Kate, Cora closes her eyes, and is there anything in particular? You're thinking about when you go out and just grab this book um i mean she's she's hoping for a book that kind of just um she's never quite trusted renata and she wants something that will reveal who who and what she really is because she doesn't trust this person who's basically her okay. age who's in this position she seems too powerful uh. Um, who would that appeal to? Um, <laughs> it's not exactly wrath. It's not passion. It's oh, how I I'm trying to get a word that sums up how you feel about Renata and what this act is embodying. It's important for you specifically. Yeah, it's... I'm trying to think of the word, because if I can provide the word, I will. But 
it, it's not malice. It's no, it, well, it's, it's kind it's of it's malice, it's a suspicion. It's, it's it's all about suspicion, but it's um, I, uh, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, chorus, yeah, chorus suspicious. She doesn't like the the sort of the power of those on top. That sort of okay. If any of I, those, I've, sort of I've got who it is. Help. So you close your eyes and you reach your hand out and you feel, and weirdly, you would normally recoil from just suddenly feeling another hand around your hand in a five foot square where you think you're alone. But you kind of get a feel like that person is already there and this hand touches yours. And it's not a male hand. It's very, it, well, you presume it's not a male hand to Feywell, who knows? But it, it's a very soft, gentle, you think more elderly hand and you get a sensation that the person that, that hand belongs to is short slightly rotund you're guessing female and there's a voice in your head and you can't tell if it's male or female uh that says i think you're looking for this one here and you open your eyes and you're holding um a uh a series of ballads by a particular bard. Uh, this is a uh, female bard um, who is called Grey Olena. <laughs> and I need to note down now that you've got that. <laughs> As you've successfully uh, stolen tons of him, so pleased. Okay, so you've got. Well, gray. there is there is a part of Cora that's like, I got a bag of holding, you know, like just <laughs> rage looting like last time, but oh, rage loot, <laughs> just walking rage. along with your hands, just please rage loot. Rage loot. Oh, <laughs> I didn't say I'd done you it, but that's why I grabbed that one. Money but... this is worth. I okay, know so this is. Have... She's also trying to like not get even more suspicious, like to not be obvious, but I don't know. Yes. Okay, so you've got the Ballads of Grey Elena, Shattered Glass, and what you know as a random book, but I'm going to write down what it is. Okay. I mean, at some um, point I will open it and we'll, we'll roleplay yeah. that later, but yeah, of course. she's yeah. not going to do that right this second. No. Fascinating. This is great, uh, Kate. Now, Glory will have some things to work with when it comes to knowing Renata. And you yeah, guys can yeah. help too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The right ha the right data in Glory's hands means that she can go into such a bitch vendetta with Renata. It's gonna be unreal. Um, so, uh, yeah. So uh, I just seen it. It is ten past eleven. But, yeah. Uh, I am backing uh, I'll, I'll back out of the up. mirror and heading back towards probably. Yeah, um, we... You realize that well. backing out the mirror isn't a physical thing. You um, you think about stepping back. And suddenly you're just stood there in Back the room, out. and you're feeling that you haven't actually, um, you haven't actually moved from the spot. You've just looked into the mirror for a second. Oh, and made you put your hand in the bag of holding. Yeah. yeah, you put your hand in the bag of holding, and um, you kind of think about the appropriate book, and suddenly you can feel that lovely, you know, gilded spine. And okay. uh, yeah, they're like, yeah, oh yeah, uh, uh, four books actually, because you got the peerage as well. And mm. yeah, so you, you, there's that lovely gilded spine and the tassel yeah. coming out the bottom end of it, and you're like, yep, I, those books are real. Yep, I, I am. I'm wondering, like, casually, at, at the same time, maybe glancing at what's on her desk. But, but. Uh, <laughs> you can, By yeah, the way, you have ju uh, just, just for your own note, uh, you have just managed to. Uh, get through Balena's Vault. So Balena's Vault is effectively a walk-in bag of holding. Don't worry about putting the bag of holding in a bag of holding. You're walking into a demi plane, um, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a demi plane that gives you a panic attack uh, as you walk through. So only somebody who can keep their mind straight and their sense of self straight can. Uh, astrally project into the vault. Out, out I want one. Is. Does a panic attack mean frightened in a sense or not? Because I have advantage uh, no, against it's... being frightened. No, it's not so much that is that you have to you have to keep your sense of self to astrally okay. project yourself into the mirror. 
and that's what you did. You you, you did the. Shouldn't t Cora uh, have that by though. default, considering she travels into the dream all the time? It's why she got given the mission. It allowed her to do the mission in the first place because she was. They were like, yeah, she can do it. You know, she's she comes here all the time. So they. That's why she got the opportunity to do it. Whereas you kind of have to be trained to walk into a vault like that normally. Um, so Renata, mm -hmm. when she so clearly might bought not be this vault or acquired it, well, if you if you tell him how you did it, he'd have a very good chance of doing it. It's not something that takes years of practice, but it is something that if you don't know how to get in, it's not something you can easily guess. Because the second that you feel like some shit's going to go wrong, you you are too rattled to be able to astrally project. Um, so yeah. Well done, you managed to get four books out of Belena's Vault. Um, Belena's Vault, I originally put that into an adventure, God, probably about 12 years ago, um, and they could not get in. They just freaked the fuck out and broke the mirror. So, uh, yeah, which, by the way, locks the vault. You have to mend the mirror. Um, so that's that. Um, I think it's probably a good place to leave you uh, with... Uh, Eclipse and Glory downstairs scrutinizing the map. Uh, you now have compass points, uh, Eclipse, rather than giving you a ton of information now, you have an awareness of where things are in the city. That's a tool that you're carrying with you. It's like a knowledge tool, okay? Um, yeah. So when you need to go to certain places in the city, I will allow a certain amount of avoiding hotspots. Doesn't mean you're going to avoid encounters entirely, but it does mean that some of the harder encounters where I would be adding three or four extra creatures. So uh, the way I was doing it is that you would have the same encounters, but if you didn't manage to get your way through the city well enough, you would go into larger clusters and you would go into fights where I've thrown two or three more of these uh, particular creatures in. Okay. Um, you'll be able to avoid them completely or go into encounters where I'm taking creatures away. Yep. To uh, cool. This is the best way that I can represent this siege. Cora has her books, and how big was your commune going to be, Nick? Is it a a now thing, or is it a next week thing? Well, I'm, I'm not technically here next week. Well, next well, week not... to everybody else is not next week, it's the week after. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Time is, is wibbly-wobbly yeah. time. That's wibbly. right. So we are currently showing 51 and 52 now um, um and then the people who are watching this is watching 53 and we're doing nothing because we're preparing for dragon meat and then 54 should be live streamed yes is there is definitely one question that i will want to ask um ask the question and we'll decide whether it's the five minutes or not okay um the first question that farewell would ask what once he's prepared all his ritual would be is the architect on this prime material plane? Uh, I haven't used commune in a while. Let me just check something. I ask three questions that have yes or no answers. That's right. Um, can't remember the rest of it. <laughs> oh, here we uh, go. You can contact your deity or divine proxy and ask up to three questions that can be answered with yes or no. You must ask your questions before the spell ends. You receive your correct answer for each question. Divine beings aren't necessarily omniscient, so you may receive an unclear as an answer if the question pertains to information that lies beyond the deity's knowledge. In a case where okay. a one-word answer could be misleading or contrary to the deity's interests, the DM might offer a short phrase as an answer instead. Ask your three questions. It was more along the lines of, because I, know, I knew that Glory and Eclipse were doing some of the work, I was waiting for them to come back to me before I completed the ritual. Uh, assume that you know. That. Yeah, assume that you know. Assume that they came to you at the end of the ritual and told you everything that they currently know for you. And that they can go back to the map if they want to. That's not a problem. It, it's not a logistical problem. Or, Based or on we what start with heard, it next week and have um, it fresh. Well, I'm asking for a reason. I want to know those questions now for a reason. And yeah, I'll answer them next week. So, first question will be, is the architect on this prime material plane? Okay, question one. Is the portal that we are seeking um, beneath the city? 
I'm going to uh, allow you not to have he, that as a He already told us. Uh, yeah. Thing because uh, oh. it's already up. Eclipse Sorry. tells you that it is above ground, that the uh, that the origin, uh, that the major origin, the major rift, is above ground. Ah, sorry, I thought I, I missed that. My That's yeah, fine. I, that. I'm refunding you a question. <laughs> <laughs> is somebody working oh, with them rift. from here? It's got to be a yes or no question, I guess. But is someone oh, in word. this building working with the uh, demons? Well, it's a one-word answer. It doesn't have to be yes or no. Yeah, I can use a short phrase. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I will ask what Felicia's question. That's a fantastic question there. Okay, question two. Is anybody in this building in concert with the demon? Good to know. Mm -hmm. And question. Farewell will ask a personal question. Um, is any of my family helping the demons? Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Ooh. Shit. You'll get your answers next week. <laughs> you mother. Yeah. <laughs> Next week for you guys, but for us, it's going to be two weeks. Two weeks, uh, two weeks yeah. <laughs> That's good, actually, because uh, my the reason why I'm asking for the questions now, two weeks, means it's more achievable. Okay. Good to know. So, to those watching, if you are in London, or if you're in the UK and feeling particularly flush, and you love role-playing, Come to Dragon Meat. It is in the Novotel West in London. Um, it is uh, where you've got uh, the UK Games Expo for board games on one side, and you've got uh, Comic-Con for General Geekery on the other side. This is the place to be for role-playing games. If you want minis, there will be minis. If you want dice, oh my god, there's going to be dice. I'm going to have to take uh, Corinne's money off her. Uh, there is going to be... Uh, dice other paraphernalia, dice, dice trays, uh, all sorts of stuff, all, all sorts of um, role-playing boxes, and most importantly, Podcast Zone UK, where we will be there. Um, we will be doing the podcast in one of the recording rooms that they've set aside for us. We will not be doing it on a stage because, yeah, that's, that's a little step too far this year. Um, but we will be recording an hour and a half or probably less by the time we get in and set everything up. Uh, roughly an hour's worth of pilot podcast, which I intend to edit and send out on the day. That's the point of doing it, is to show how easy that first step is. And it's okay to not be prepared, not know the system well enough. Um, you know, Kate's never played uh, Star Wars RPG before, and neither has Nick. I don't think Sean has. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it it's one of those things where as long as you just get on that journey that's all that matters and that's what we're going to be showing uh kate at three o'clock or is it four o'clock at uh, five o'clock they moved it five o'clock okay five they, they moved it okay at five o'clock kate will be doing a panel at dragon meat as well which is representation in fantasy settings and uh yeah it, it's going to be fantastic and if anybody by chance has seen this episode and uh the last two as well because man there's been a lot going on come and tell us come and tell us because that would be great if you're there at uh at dragon meets and you've seen our episodes um then that would be fantastic but for the rest of you uh rattles i do apologize if last week which is now this week for us but last week uh i apologize if you ended up sat down for six hours watching episode um uh 51 and 52 back to back i apologize yeah. to shrine i think is probably what i need to apologize for but if you do end up binge watching both respect <laughs> and i'm sorry we will try not to do double bills of three hours a piece uh, <laughs> but uh we love you all and uh welcome to anybody who has tried out one of these episodes um as a result of dragon meat as well and we will see you at dragon meat or next week and soon live on twitch good night